Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Due to COVID-19, Committee of Adjustment public hearings are being conducted virtually by electronic means through WebEx webinar, an online digital platform, and streamed on the Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. Participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentation to the committee using WebEx webinar, which is moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching on YouTube. My name is Isaac Laluz, and I'll be chairing the hearing. With me today, the staff, uh, we have Simon Lamb, who is the, uh, deserves a congratulation, just uh, being named as Deputy Secretary, Treasurer, and Manager. We have Sam Samoni and Alex Chu. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting with their computer, tablet, smartphone, telephone, and have the option by participating via video or audio only. All participants will automatically be muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator one person at a time. We ask that you also mute your devices until you're called on to speak. Those participants by video appearance will be temporarily upgraded to panelists when your item is being held. During this time, your camera will be enabled. You will only be visible during your five minute allotted speaking time. At all other times, your video will be disabled and you'll be reinstated as an attendee. The Committee for Adjustment staff will share presentations submitted in accordance with the uh, written submission deadline. Members of the public and participants and, uh, and applicants are not allowed to use share screen or any other panelist control during a video uh, appearance. The host will remove you from panelists if you fail to respect the instruction. For land acknowledgement, we acknowledge the land we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Section 45 and 53 of the Planning Act 1990 as amended, this meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the zoning bylaw, permission to extend or alter legal non-conforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone in attendance today who wants to receive a copy of the decision of the committee must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address, because the Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email only. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, decisions may be appealed to the Toronto local appeal body known as TLAB or in some limited circumstances to the Ontario Lands Tribunal OLT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the decision of the committee. The procedure to, today will be as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant may proceed with their presentation if desired. When the committee does not require presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak to the committee. Each speaker, including the applicant, the applicant will be given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when the five minute mark is reached. When addressing the committee, please clearly state your name and address and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters outlined in the application only. The applicant or agent will proceed first and will make a presentation to the committee 
please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. The committee may decide to defer the application if substantially revised to ensure the revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to receive a notice are informed of the changes. Then individuals, either in support or in opposition, will be invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker at the end of their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant agent has the chance to address only those issues that were raised by the speakers. This will mark the end of the discussion and the application will then be taken to committee for decision. Now, for some housekeeping here, we have, there is no minutes to approve today, and uh, members and staff, any, uh, any uh, conflict of interest to declare? None? Okay. We have, uh, we're gonna entertain the deferral request first. We have this morning for a deferral uh, item number five. Item number five, which is 71 Marmion Avenue. And here, number five, we have here um, Marin Zabzoni. Are you there? Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Marin Zabzoni here at 1140 the Queensway. Thank you. Uh, you're, uh, could you please tell us the reason for uh, deferral? Yes. Uh, planning uh, reached out to us uh, in terms of some of the variances. They wanted revisions. And we just needed more time to talk to them and work out what those revisions will be as they reached out uh, only a few weeks ago. Okay. That's okay. the main reason. Yeah, that's enough. So, okay, so you're asking for a deferral in order to make some revisions. Now we have Correct. we have another three people listed here, so we'll hear what they have to say. Anthony Wong, are you there? Anthony Wong. Anthony, you're unmuted. Anthony Wong's here. Yeah, here? could you please state your name and address for us? State, my name is Anthony Wong, 622 St. Germain Avenue. Thank you. You heard what's happening with the file. The agent Hello. is asking for deferral, which means if we defer it today, we're not going to discuss Hello. it. Okay? We're not, we're not, we won't discuss it. Are you okay with that? Mr. Wong? We lost him, huh? Anthony, you're still unmuted. You should be able to speak. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll go to the uh, next one. Andrew Lee, are you there? Andrew Lee? Good morning, it's Andrew Lee speaking. Good morning, could you please state- Good morning. Your name and address, Anthony Lee, what's your address? My name is Andrew Lee, I'm at 73 Marmion Avenue. Thank you. So the applicant is asking for a deferral, meaning we're not discussing it today if we decide to defer it. You have no problem with that or you have a problem? Uh, I don't have a problem with that. I'm agreeable to a deferral. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we want to know. The next is Eretz. Uh, Sailor, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name and address? Yes, my name is Eris Seiler. I'm at 620 St. Germain Avenue. Thank you. So you heard what's happening. Uh, if we defer the application, we won't discuss it today. You're okay with that? I'm okay with that. Yes, thank, thank you. Thank you. So we we'll go back to Mr. Wong. Anthony Wong, are you still there? Anthony, you're unmuted. Hello, can somebody hear me? Yeah, Mr. Wong. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we hear you. You, uh, you were in the middle, we were in the middle of asking you, uh, the applicant is asking for deferral, and if we do that- I'm we... sorry, I got no audio. Um, okay, so anyway- technical okay, if we... issue in here. I do not have audio, if somebody can hear me. Yeah, we hear you, we hear you, do you hear us? Can somebody give me some advices? Do you hear us? 
Please. I can hear you just fine, Mr. Chair. It's, yeah, uh, I know. I think it's on the other end. Yeah, on the other end, you can see that. Okay, anyways, I get... I think we're going to move on. Okay, members, uh, we have uh, the deferral request for uh, for a change, like, like they, they will make revisions. Uh, we heard the uh, neighbors have no problem. One, we, he couldn't hear us. So anyways, uh, any um, any question or, uh, or motion? Yeah, Ms. Tarodi. Yes, to, to you, Mr. Chair. Um, no question, but I'm ready to put forward a motion. Okay. So um, I put forward a motion to uh, defer this application, sign it up, so that the applicant have enough time to address the the concern of city staff and revise the, the drawing and design. Thank you. Second, Ms. Manning, all in favor? Okay. Sir, uh, Mr. Zabzoni, your application is deferred, Sunny Dye, so check with the staff when it's coming back. Thank you. Okay. All right, so we're going to uh, start with the agenda, and that is number one. Application number one, which is 112 Armour Boulevard. Right now. I'm on Committee of Adjustment. You got the drawings. I sent them to you. Who's, okay. Uh, just a second. Who's Go talking? away, please. Who's, who's talking now? The applicant. The applicant. Okay. Mr. Enzo, uh, Enzo Le Luciano, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Could you please state your name and address for us, and we, we're going to move on. My committee of adjustment. Um, Enzo, you're unmuted right now. Hello? Yeah, we hear you. Do you hear us? Oh, yes. Okay. This yes, is my name is Enzo Lacosano. I'm the uh, agent for this application. Very good. Yeah, we're the Committee of Adjustment. We didn't understand what you were saying. Okay, we have here one, uh, one uh, story addition and one variance. Um, Correct. Okay. Members? Yeah, could you, could you get the members here? Okay, members, we have one uh, one variance and um, one story addition. Do, do we do we need the presentation here? No. Okay. Okay, Mr. Luciano, uh, we don't uh, we don't need a presentation here. Do you want to add something? No, nothing to add at this moment. Okay, you're not changing anything. One variance. Okay. No. Okay. Any question or motion there, please? Anyone? Mr. Tarodi, okay. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application. There's no condition. Um, uh, no condition. There's no condition. Thank you. Second? Second, Mr. Bartolo, all in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is approved unanimously and no conditions. Sorry. Thank you very much. Have a great morning. You too. Okay, application number two, which is 58 Athabasca Avenue, application number two. And here we have uh, Aida Evangelist. Are you there? Good morning, Mr. Chair, members. Good Evangelista, on behalf of the owner. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? And Hi. congratulations, Simon. Okay. Very good. Um, <laughs> now, uh, this is a new dwelling. We have eight variances. 
forestry, staff report mm -hmm. modify per applicant. Okay, so before we go, could you please tell us what you're modifying, what variance you're modifying, and to what before we move on? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We are modifying variance number two, which will now read 31.96. Thank you. And, uh, and okay, and there is a condition. Okay, and there is a condition uh, to build and east and, and east and west elevation. Okay, so please go ahead, make a short presentation. That is make a short presentation. We don't have any okay. we don't have anybody else registered here to speak. So uh, just make mm -hmm. a short presentation, please. Okay, so um, we have here a new build on Athabasca. It's consistent and uh, very characteristic to other new homes in the area. This area is being revitalized. Uh, the variances that we have in front of you, variance number one um, we, it is for the widest point only, the 3.81, and that's the widest point. Um, on my submission, did you get a copy of my submission? I've outlined the variances in variance one. You'll see that it's at the widest point, which is right where the stairs are. And variance two, we have modified our height. It just takes us to the very top peak of the roof. Um, the planning staff, they are okay with the main wall heights on the side because it does take you to the top of the windows, which um, penetrate the uh, roof gable. Uh, but the remainder of the um, main wall height um, is below eight. It's uh, just about 7.98 and staff were okay with that. Um, now, variance number six is a little misleading. Um, through the interpretation of the zoning examiner, the front foyer, um, she's considered that as floor one, and but the deck is off of the kitchen, which is the main floor. And if you if you take a look at the section, you'll notice that um, the deck is off of the the main floor of a house. This is a two story home that we are proposing. And I am open to any questions you may have. Okay, thank you. Uh, any uh, members, any question? If no question, can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Tarodin? Yes, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with one modification that variance number two, the lot covered is now 31.96%. And I also would like to add the condition recommended by staff that the proposal be developed substantially in accordance with the east and west elevation drawing, stamp and date on September 6, 2020. Um, and then I would like to also add the um, forestry condition. Okay, so that's it. Uh, second. Ms. Manning is seconding. All in favor? Okay. Unanimous. Ms. Evangelista, your application is unanimously approved, subject to the change you made, and subject to the staff condition and forestry. Thank you very much. Okay. Application number three, which is um, 154 Row Avenue, application number three. And here we have Navid Arbabi. Are you there? Navid Arbabi. Navid, you're unmuted. Navid Arbabi, are you there? Navid, you're oh. unmuted. Um, if you try, try speaking. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Could you please state your name and address oh, okay. for us? Hi, my name is Navid Arbabi from Banana Art Design Studio, 2017 Avenue Road, and I'm the agent for the applicant. Thank you. Okay, so this is a new dwelling. 
nine variances. Staff reports is said to modify number four per the applicant, and there is forestry. So could you please make a short presentation and tell us the um, cover the change that you want to make in relation to variance number four? Yes, so variance number four, we are increasing the soft landscaping area to 72.5% as per the staff report. So variance number four, the number is 72.5%. Okay. So I would like to uh, mention that this property is located um, within a zoning uh, area that right next door to it, it changes to an R zone with a different frontage and setback requirements. And the majority of the houses on this street uh, follow the other uh, zoning bylaw, which requires a 0 0.9 meter setback. And uh, as you guys already know, the, the style and the shape of this house is very predominant in on the street. This specific property has a one and a half meter easement uh, by the city of Toronto on the east side, which actually pushes us um, towards the west. Um, and several of the variances are driven by that. Um, as you can see, we are we have a 1.5 meter setback on the east side because of the easement and we can't do anything. Um, therefore, we have to push the house towards the west and several of the variances are driven from that, such as the eaves and the projections and the setback of uh, the porch. The coverage is uh, standard. We've talked to the neighbors, we've talked to planning, nobody has an issue with it. And um, the side yard setback also, we are actually in very well in keeping with uh, older developments and newer developments on the street. Uh, we have a forestry condition that um, we have on for the front tree that is a city owned tree and we are taking every measure that has been required by forestry. So we would like to add that condition as well. Okay, are you through? Okay, so could you please go over again yes. on oh, number four? I didn't get that very well. You, number four, you're, uh, you were asking originally 59.6, um, you're changing it to what? 72.5%. 72.5, thank you. Okay. 72.5. And uh, did you mention another change you made? No, that's no, it. No, no. Okay, that's it. Okay, very good. Members, any question? No? Can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. I'll put forward uh, a motion to approve this application subject to the following revisions and variance number four be changed to 72.5% and that uh, <clears throat> uh, that it be uh, subject to the uh, conditions in the uh, urban forestry memo attached. Thank you. That's it. Second. Thank you. That's it. Second. 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 Me, uh, Mr. Tarodi, all in favor? Okay. Okay. So... Uh, sir, your application is uh, approved unanimously, subject to the change you, Thank you. you made in forestry. Thank you. You're welcome. Number four, which is 83 Chadley Avenue, application number four. And here we have, uh, first we had here the owner uh, registered here, Oliver Yu, and then later on, Sahar Asfa. Are, are you, yes. You're there. Okay. Could you please state your name and address and tell us? My name is Sahar. Okay. My name is Sahar Asfa, and I'm presenting on behalf of the owner, 83 Charlie Avenue. Okay. Now, the, the owner registered is Oliver Yu. Does he want to speak or you're, or you're, you're speaking instead? I would, I would speak on behalf of him. You're speaking. Okay. So, number four we have here. Two-story rear addition, attic. We have four uh, variances. We got here 11 letters of objection and two letters of support. Could you please cover this very well? And because we have like a, a lot of people who want to speak after you. So please cover the um, yeah. your five minutes presentation. 
Sure. So uh, we're presenting an addition on for the basement, first floor and second floor. And we're, we're going to have an access to the attic as a storage and a small balcony. So uh, the variances is for the building lengths, uh, which the permitted is 17 meter, but we are presenting 17.75. And the floor space in, in index will increase to seven, uh, 0 0.75. Uh, I added the height uh, of the sides for the attic uh, from 7.5, which is permitted, to 8.55. So in the back side, the landscape is uh, what, after we do the proposal addition, it, it will remain 106.86 square meter, which is enough uh, for the uh, rainwater. And I have a present, I made a presentation, a research for this uh, area. Um, if you can see the next, uh, the next uh, slide, please. So the similarity, um, if you can take a look at the length of the houses in that street, you can see that there's a lot of house that even they are bigger than us, like 95 Chaudley, which is 19.5 meter. I took this measurement from zoning interactive map. I'm, I'm no, I know it's not 100% accurate, but like you can have an idea. Uh, 93 uh, Chaudley, it's 17.52. 73 Chaudley is 18.4. And I just want to mention that uh, there is a house uh, that uh, went to the committee and got approval for the length 18.06 on 21, 2021. It, their, the name is 30 Chaudsworth uh, Drive, which is one street behind Chaudley. Uh, and, uh, Behind Charlie and Cheriton. Next slide, please. If you see 92 Charlie, uh, so uh, it, the, the length is tw uh, 23.05. I know this is a multi unit, but still it's in, the, in that uh, uh, zone. Uh, next slide, slide, please. So 95 and 93, they have uh, they have uh, their uh, um, length is bigger than us. So we're not the if we do the addition, we're not going to be the bigger house. Um, the next slide will show uh, the sides uh, heights of uh, some example. 50 Chaudley Avenue is the example of the heights that they're increased the side and they're using the attic as a livable space. Next slide is uh, 70 Chaudley Avenue. Again, they're increasing the height of the site and using the uh, attic as a livable space. And next slide is 74 Chaudley Avenue. You can even see the picture from realtor.ca that they already use the attic as a livable space. 77 Chaudley, next slide. Also, they are using the attic as a livable space. 88 Chaudley again, they're using the attic as a livable space, 72 Chaudley again. So the next slide is, I want to show two concerns for my neighbors that I, it comes to my mind. If you see the treaty, uh, we're doing this uh, small balcony. Maybe my neighbor will concern that is, we're going to have a view for it uh, to their bedrooms. But next slide, uh, if you see next slide, we can use uh, the wood screening for both sides of the uh, balcony to uh, to be able to respect my neighbor's privacy. And the second concern is uh, that uh, the, uh, my neighbor for 85 uh, Chaudley Avenue, they are concerned that if the cars, uh, because the addition is two meter away from the property line, so they thought that the car cannot uh, pass through that and two meter is not enough. So the solution is, next slide, uh, we, I'm, I'm willing to shrink the first floor as well to make it to 2.5 or even 3 meters. It doesn't matter. My, uh, the owner of 83 Chaudley is uh, very um, flexible and want to just to um, have his neighbor satisfied. So um, that's all the story. Okay. Yeah, you're into uh, perfect on your five minutes. Now, you said I can do this, I can do that. Are you changing anything in your variances? 
Right now, no, but like we would love to have our neighbors satisfied. So if they re if they it's their concern, willing to change it. Right now, you're not changing anything. Even you don't want to change anything. Right now, we're not. Changing. Okay, okay. We'll hear the neighbors, and then and then we'll uh, then we'll have you respond to them. So the next one is Jeff and Barbara Wilson. Are you there? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, neither of the Wilsons are on the call, and I have tried to reach out to them, and they have not picked They're up. They're not. Okay. John and Holly uh, Hilborn, are you there? Uh, John, you're unmuted. John and Holly and Holly uh, Hilborn, are you there? Uh, John, uh, John, you're unmuted. If you could try to speak, um, if not, uh, pr tr uh, please try to re uh, dis uh, please disconnect and try to reconnect to the meeting. Okay, we'll go back. To the next one is uh, Geraldine Sparrow. Are you there? Geraldine Sparrow. Uh, hello? Yeah, good morning. Are you Geraldine? Yes. yes, I am. Okay, please state your name and address for us. Geraldine Jody McDonald at 120 Delarain Avenue. Okay, and uh, could you tell us what's your concern about this application? Um, well, I did send in a letter, um, which you've probably read, so I just want to add to it two things. Number one, since I sent in that letter, I've had to watch a lot of digging around the most beautiful and healthy tree on the block, and I'm very concerned about the tree. It looks to me like the digging has been done without approval, and there's some... I worry that they're actually trying to kill the tree, okay. and it really is a really beautiful tree. Okay, I hate to, um, I hate to, excuse me, I hate to stop you, but just to make you, to help you out, we do not deal with the trees here. The trees is Department of Forestry, which will take care of that if they can, they cannot touch it without checking with them. We can't, we can't, it's not that mean we don't care about them, except it's not our, uh, our, our terms of reference. So the trees are the forestry. Yes, but but the the forestry people asked you not to make any approvals today. Is not, yeah. So, so I didn't. Under yeah. So so uh, between between them and the forestry, they will have to. We do, we, we do not decide on the tree whether it should be removed or not. Beside the tree, any okay. any, any other concern? Yes, I think the request, the variance to request to move the house really close to the west so that it's impacting the neighbor on the west at 135. Deloraine is really inappropriate. It is a very large lot and there's no reason why the house can't be built, a very nice house can't be built on that property without impinging upon the neighbor. So I don't feel there's any reason to approve the variance. Okay. The, the second thing is I, I think that the overall impression of the house is not in keeping with the official plan here okay, okay. oh we'll, yeah anything else? oh i'm my neighbor just told me i'm on the wrong one what yeah. is it hans hans oh. are, are we talking about 133 delarain here no no why have you called me I'm down to speak for 133 Delarain. You're registered here for uh, for uh, 82. Uh, one one. No. No 133 Delarain. Is there any mix up there? Sorry, there was a there was a mix up in the. Um, There's a mix up. Uh, my okay. apologies. Okay. Okay. Uh, sorry. The uh, yeah, there was a mix up in the. Um, in the in the in okay, the, I'll talk to you. Yeah, okay. So that's that's why. Okay, that's why we don't have any trees here. Okay, so that's the. Um, uh, no, we're here into uh, into the uh, the um, 
the one which is 83 Chadley Avenue. That's the one we're discussing now. And your name was here as speaker, but I guess there was a mistake. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I've, uh, I've unmuted, the, I believe I've unmuted now the correct uh, Geraldine. Um, Geraldine, if you could try speaking. Okay. So Geraldine is not for this one. Okay. A anyone from the older one, like uh, the um, Jeff Wilson or John uh, Holly and uh, Helburn? If they're not there, we'll move on. There's more speakers here. Can we, can we move on to Donna? Yeah. Uh, Donna and Peter uh, White, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state your name and address for us? My, Actually, yeah, okay. my husband's going to speak. That's Peter fine. Peter White. That's fine. Thank you. That's fine. My name is Peter White. I live at 81 Chudley Avenue. I am to the east uh, of the applicant's uh, address of 80, 83 Chudley Avenue. Thank um, you. My wife and I are hoping that uh, our sub, uh, letter of submission opposing this development has been read thoroughly and carefully by the Committee of Adjustment members. The only things that we really would like to add is that it's more of a question to the committee and that is, by what measure does a minor variance become a major variance? The applicants here are demanding a, seven, a 0.75 GFA, and it's just overwhelming our small house. Uh, the applicants, uh, just by the way, have chosen not to speak to us. There has been no communication whatsoever. So all that we've been able to see is the proposed there is their proposed plans that you have and i want to underline proposed plans because what we're most concerned about um, apart from everything that we've addressed in our letter of uh, our submission letter is um, the brick wall the massively tall brick wall that we will now be faced with and we question why there are no windows uh, there's no windows on the third floor addition as well, and we would say uh, we would like to respectfully say that that's a third story. That's not a proposed attic or storage area. They have a stairwell leading to that supposed storage area. They have um, double glass doors onto a balcony, and what we are now very concerned about is our privacy. Um, and how they can look into our second floor windows. Uh, our daughter's window will be front and center to that balcony. That is most definitely the case. Um, and so we would also like the committee to consider um, in the course of construction, if they get their building permit, could they at some later stage um, uh, put in windows, install new windows? Um, that are not shown on the plan because it makes no sense to us anyway to have this large addition with no windows being proposed uh, on the second floor or on the third floor. But again, it's the privacy issue that we're most concerned about. Um, their third floor addition, um, will it be allowed to have windows installed? Uh, they have skylights, um, but there is no indication of windows along the east side and their proposed attic or storage space, we would suggest that these are misleading um, and are purposely being we're misleading in their uh, application here today. Um, the other thing that we would like to address too is the surface runoff. Chudley is notorious, Chudley is notorious for uh, 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 surface water runoff, and they give us no sense of uh, uh, um, assurance that their runoff won't flow onto our property because that's the natural grade of the land uh, on this street. So as I say, um, these are the, the issues that are most compelling for us, and we hope that our letter um, goes further in, in stating our, our opposition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, yeah. Mr. Chair, can I just 
Mr. Chair, I just want to say one thing. Geraldine Sparrow has knocked on our front door. She is a neighbor. Excuse me. Excuse she's me. Hold, on the hold a second. Who's speaking now? Yeah. Uh, Donna White. Sorry. Donna and Peter White. You oh, just okay. heard you, from my husband. Okay. You're still the same. Uh, yeah. Okay. Same household. Okay. Yeah. We got yeah, you. Yeah. Same household. You want but to just before you mute me again, I wanted to let you know that Geraldine Sparrow from um, is a neighbor who you have listed to speak. She has knocked on our front door and she will be able to speak from here if that's okay because she had co connection issues at her house. Excuse I, me. I was interrupted by the person on Delarain where there was a mistake. Okay, ex yeah, it's okay. Hold one second. Donna and Peter okay, thank you. Donna and Peter White, are you still there? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. okay, so hold a second, please. We'll see if there is any question from the members for you after you spoke. We have the neighbors here who spoke. And uh, any question? Miss Satarodi has a question. Yes, just um, through you, Mr. Chair, I would like to know uh, the um, Mr. White, Mr. and Mrs. White are located on the east side of the property or west? We are on the east side of the property. Okay, if you're on the east side and they don't have any window uh, on the east side, uh, it's actually give you a little bit more privacy on that side. I understand your comment about the balcony, but the fact that they, they didn't put any but windows on the east side, it's, uh, it's actually provide more privacy. Just that's just that's the comment on, I just want to. Well, I guess what we're questioning is, can they put in windows at a later date? Um, I, I don't think We so. have seen nothing, but we have, they have not chosen to sp speak yeah. to us about their design plans. But I think city staff can, can reply to that question of you. Yeah, so I, I just. I, I don't think we decide. Well, I, excuse me. I don't think we decide here whether they should pin windows or not. You, you, you stated your concern. We're going to get back the agent to speak to see what changes they want to make, and then we'll then we'll move on from there. Okay. So that's fine. The balcony is still a concern. Okay. Yeah, Thank but you. as far as I know, we we just uh, decide based on the drawing that we have, and uh, and uh, the applicant also should build as per drawing they submitted. Okay. Any any other question for the speaker? Okay, okay. Now we, uh, we 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 have to finish with the list here. We have lots of other speakers here that registered first for this here and this one here. So we have here. Uh, if, if I could speak, it's Geraldine Sparrow. I I could. I was cut off by the lady uh, at the other address, and there was some connection problem. Do you hear me? Uh, your what's your name? Geraldine. Geraldine Sparrow, 77 Chudley. Yeah. She called you, out my name before, and yeah. the woman on uh, Delorain spoke. Oh, was, I see. Okay. Mixed up. Okay, so Geraldine. But I'm here with the Whites, and I would like to just add a couple of points. Oh, okay, okay. Geraldine, you're, you want to speak on this application here. Go ahead, please. Yes, I want to speak on 83. Okay. Um, first of all, my letter covers my position, but I mentioned... Uh, I adopt the submissions of my neighbor at 77, I meant 75. It should, that's just a typographical error. Um, I certainly, I was quite astounded to hear the applicant say that 77 had living space on the third floor. That is an old attic. There's nothing up there, not even storage. It's an old dusty attic. No one has ever used it as living space. Uh, the applicant did not come by and ask me about it. And in my view, that really reflects on this application. There's a lot of references to Cheriton and streets where the lots are much bigger. And, and I think that's uh, irrelevant. Um, I agree with everyone who has said that 0.75 is far too large. And particularly these side walls, which are 8.54 when the bylaw specifies 7.5. And I will speak to this later, but a decision of the OMB I was involved regarding uh, 79 uh, adopted the uh, FSI of 0.61. And a planner testified in a decision of Karen Sloan of the OMB 27-2015 indicating 0.61 was an appropriate coverage for this area. 
uh, I would just like to, there's also no, no speaking to softscaping, which should be 0.75 in the front yard, as I've read the bylaws, unless there's been a very recent change. And I don't see that spoken to in the application anywhere. It's more or less been glossed over. So I, I think this application be reject, should be rejected or at least come back for some of these issues to be addressed. But 77 does not have a third floor uh, living space. So I question how well research has been done here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any question for this uh, speaker? Okay, so we'll continue with the list and we'll come back to the agents to respond on Mr. all Chair. these questions, yeah? Mr. Chair, um, uh, Jeffrey Wilson is now um, on the call. Oh, okay, the first one, okay. Uh, Mr. Wilson, are you there? Jeff Wilson. Jeffrey Wilson. Okay, hi. Has, can, you hear, can, you, can you hear me? Yeah, could you please, for the, for the system here, state your name and address, please. Certainly. My name is Jeffrey Wilson. I reside at 82 Cheriton Avenue. Thank you. And the applicant and the applicant's house, uh, the backyard uh, adjoins adjoins. Uh, or we we are backdoor neighbors. Okay. So tell us what's your concern, and uh, we'll move on. And well, I, I echo uh, the two previous speakers, uh, uh, the Whites and and the lady who just spoke. Um, we did an addition a number of years ago to 0.5 uh, of, of our 50% coverage. Um, and 77% is is terribly, uh, it's a huge uh, addition and, and and concerns my wife and myself that it, it grossly um, is overarching uh, the, 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 the neighborhood um, and, and is not in keeping with, with the neighborhood coverage and the type of housing that's on Chardley and Sheridan, and so I, I, um, um, I hope you accept my my, my concern, uh, and I and I believe that um, that this this um, application uh, should be refused Thank by you. Uh, by yourselves. Thank, Thank you. you. Any question for this speaker? No. Okay. So we'll go to the next one, who is Evelyn, and uh, Evelyn Huang. And Trevor Landry, are you there? Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, Evelyn Huang and Trevor Landry. Okay. We reside at 85 Chudley. Okay, very good. To the west of the property. Yeah, so please tell us what's your concern. Uh, yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for the time. Uh, I'm actually traveling in Germany, so if I got cut off any moment, Trevor will uh, speak to continue on our concerns. Uh, I think firstly, we do share mutual driveway and very narrow driveway with 83 Charlie. Uh, I think uh, the architect spoke early on, brought that to our attention that they're willing to widen their um, driveway to 2.5 to 3 meters. We are okay with that. Um, but another concern is really because of shared driveway in the winter, we actually don't have space to put out snow. So why that's relevant? Because with that GFC index at 0.75, which means you don't even have, like with that limited space today, you're taking that away even further. So the house is running, the proposed addition is like 7.32 meters, which is on average, I think it's eight feet longer than most additions. Um, I think in aggregate, there are four minor variances, but when you put everything together, the house is just trying to push it on all directions to maximize their square footage. I think uh, the neighbor did spoke to us about their plan, but we think that that lens is not acceptable. It pushes further to the edge of our deck. I think unless there's significant modification um, made, be made here, uh, we can agree with the plan as it is today. Okay. Thank you. I'll see if the member... Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Did you finish? No? Uh, uh, yes. I, I think I don't... Um, I, I just want to clarify that uh, the actor mentioned that they're waiting to move it back to 2.5 to 3 meters in the driveway. But I don't know if that has to be written in, in a written form before I can see I agree with that. Okay, all right, so 
Let's see if the members have any question for any question for the speaker. No? Okay. So we'll have the um, the agent come back and respond to all those concerns, okay? And then we'll make our decision. So uh uh, Mr. Chair, can we try to go back to John Hilborn to see if his audio is working? Okay. John or Holly Wilburn, are you there? John Hilborn. Holly Hilborn. No. How about uh, Oliver, Ch Oliver Schwan? Uh, John, you're unmuted. Okay, so we, we, let's move on to the other one. Uh, Marjorie uh, Sharon? Uh, Mr. Huh? Um, Mr. Chair, uh, Marjorie's not on the call. Oh, she's not. Okay. And uh, so that's com that complete the list except the uh, ones before. There is Oliver and John and Holly Hilburn. So could you try one of those, please? One. Mr. Chair, Oliver is the owner. I believe Oliver is the owner. Oh, okay. Didn't say here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, how about uh, John and Holly Elburn? We'll try more time. One more time. Mr. Chair, I just tried to call John and I got his uh, answering machine. Okay. Okay. Uh. We can just, I'm trying to reach them. So just have the applicant respond for now and we'll go back. Uh, Sahar Asfa, are you there? I'm there, yes. Okay, so we still have one person to speak, and, uh, and they're trying to reach him. In the meantime, you heard enough of the rest, so could you go back again yeah. and see? Uh, yeah, every sure. Okay, so everyone was making a, a, a comment to the, uh, to the FSI. They were saying 77. I don't know why, because you, you're having 75, which I had a question too. So could you cover that one as well, because it's a concern of all of them? So 77 Charlie Avenue, uh, if you see the picture in my presentation, you can see there is a window for in the attic. So yes, I'm not 100% sure that there is a livable space, but um, since you're adding a window in the attic, I'm just assuming that there is a livable space. But I already showed you five examples for the attic livable space. Uh, one of them is uh, 74 Chardley, which I showed the interior and the exterior uh, that you can see that they are using the attic as a livable space. And uh, we're not, uh, I, I didn't even get the uh, comment from my examiner regarding this. So um, I think uh, like we are fine. We're just using it for storage. And even if you use it for a livable space, 
uh, it's it's going it's going to be like 53, 54 square meter, a very small uh, place. And we're not even adding window on each side. Um, we're just adding one small uh, skylight just to add some daylight in it. Um, so regarding my concern um, for the concern for the neighbor, 81 Chadley, we're not going to add windows uh, because already the setback is uh, like less than 1.2 meter. If you want to add windows, we're going to have to add the fire shutter, which is very expensive. And also we're going to like if we're by not adding the window, we'll provide the privacy for the neighbors um, for 81 Chadley Avenue. So. Um, Regarding the uh, concern for the Cheriton, uh, the my neighbor in the back adjacent to my uh, to my uh, lot, uh, eighty and eighty two Cheriton. If you check the zoning interactive map, the distance from their house to their rear side property line is sixteen meter. My distance setback after the proposal is 16 meter. So that gives me 32 meter away, which they have enough privacy. So, um, and there is a lot of trees in the back, which will uh, support their privacy. They're not, we're not going to have a site on, on their uh, lot. And also regarding uh, concern for 85, ask the zoning, we're allowed to have two meter away from the property line if we want to do the addition. So we did not disrespect the zoning, but if, if I, uh, like, I want, if we, um, I just want to satisfy the neighbors, we're going to add, uh, shrink the first floor by half more meter or even one meter just to satisfy her. Also, the, the uh, softscape, after the proposal, we're still having 1.6.86 square meter in the backside of the house. So before the proposal, the area was 131 so, uh, square meter for softscape. We're just uh, shrink it to 106 square meter. So we're not taking so much away of the softscape. The frontscape, uh, it, it's a 27 point 24 square meter so um it's still enough for the uh, rainwater and if anybody has concern of that okay are you are you finished yeah yes okay let's see if the members have any question any question mr tarodi We don't hear you. We don't hear you. Yes, I just have a question from the presenter. Um, earlier in her presentation, she mentioned that she's willing to put privacy screen on both, at both sides of the east-west side of the balcony. And then I would like to, and then also neighbors, some of the neighbors who talk, they had a concern. So I would like to know, um, I, I would like to send. 100%. That's what we're willing to do. We we don't want to fight with our neighbors. My owner of 83, he's very flexible. We're going to add wood screening on both sides, not on one side, both sides. So 81 and 85, we're not going to have any view and we're going to respect their privacy. Any other question? Mr. Bartolo? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the applicant mentioned that they're uh, prepared to or they're going to make revisions to the plan to reduce uh, the or the width of one of the sides, which is fine. But I just want to know, is that being proposed now? Are you changing the plans here? And how will those affect the variances that are being proposed? So we're not going to propose it now, but uh, later... Uh, once we apply for the building permit, we want to do uh, we want to do some revision to shrink the first floor, if we have to. When you say if you have to, who's going who's going to tell you to do that? We don't negotiate here. You tell us what you want. to Yeah, do. yeah, yeah. Like if we, if we if you if you uh, guy if you're gonna tell me that this condition it, it, like it, we're gonna give you approval for with this condition, hundred percent, I'm gonna do it. 
No, you say, if you, if you tell us to do this, then I'm going to do it. We don't negotiate here. You tell us what you want to do, and we'll make a decision. Tell us what you want to do. We're going to shrink, we're going to shrink the first floor by half meter. So from the property line, it would be 2.5 meter. I'm not sure 2.5 meter is enough for the for the neighbor 85. If it's not, we will do three uh, one meter more. Like so, it would be three meter away from the side property line. So right now you want to change what? Does that affect any 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 variance here? It will decrease uh, the floor space index as well by three square meter, almost four square meter. Your FSI is 0.75. You want to change it to what? I want to, I will change it to, uh, if you just give me a minute, I will, I will tell you. Um, I'm going to change it to, um, so the first floor would be 115 square meter as a proposal. And uh, so we can have the floor space index at 0 0.73. So you're reducing it by 0 0.02. 0 .02. Okay. So the, the very yeah. so the the FSI she's changing it to 0.73. That's all. That's all the change she's making. Miss uh, Miss Manny, yes. I have a question. Do you know what the current FSI of the of the property is, of the home? Do you have the question, Mr. Uh, Astro? The question. Yes. Yes. Question, uh, the question. The existing. Yes. The question from the member is: What is the current FSI before the changes? So it's zero point three. Zero point three. Okay. Yes. Point three. Wow, big change. Yeah. Okay. Any other question? Guys, um, Miss Miss A quick question. Could you please? Yes, that this. Uh, okay, Miss Atarodi, go ahead, please. To you, just just another quick question. So, does this reduction also um, affect the variance number two, building length, or? No, no, no. It's not affecting the building links. Okay. I'm going to shrink it from the west side. From, from the west uh, side. Okay. Thank you. Any other question? Miss Manning, you had a question? Um, so one of the neighbor's concerns was the ability for a car to pass through. Does does changing the FSI to 0 0.73, is, the intent, in, is your intent that that issue will be resolved? Yes, uh, right now the car the car can pass through if we are doing the proposal for two meter. But if I shrink it more, it would be even easier. The the exist you know the uh, as per the zoning, each parking lot is two point six by five point six me square meter allowed. I'm doing three meter uh, shrink, so it it is more than enough to pass the car th through to the end of the. Uh, Posing parking spots. Any any other question? If not, anyone with a motion for a motion? Excuse me, Mr. Chair. Alex was just verifying if we can get a hold of the other speaker. Well, I don't think. Excuse me, I don't. Can I have a motion then, please? Miss Manning. 
Through you, Mr. Chair, I'm putting forth a motion uh, to deny this this application. I've listened to the applicant um, and all of, all of the neighbors, and I'm not convinced uh, that these variances are minor, uh, particularly the F FSI. And I think the neighbors um, have some legitimate concerns um, that, that these variances will create some significant issues for their privacy. So your motion is to deny the application, right? Second? Correct. Can I have a second, please? No second? Okay, then can I have another motion then? Mr. Bartolo? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, while I've listened to everybody and understand the concerns of the neighbors, um, I do think some of it's mitigated by what the applicant is proposing. And um, I don't see an, an adverse impact on it as described in, in many of the cases. So uh, I'm going to put forward a motion to approve this application subject to the one revision that uh, variance number three be changed to 0 0.73 uh, times the... Uh, lot area as uh, put forward by the applicant here. Okay, uh, do you have a second? I have a friendly amendment. If Mr. Bartola, Mr. Bartola would like, go ahead. I would like to applicant a privacy screen at both east and west side of the balcony, 1.5 meter. Yes, a person. A person. No, no problem. No problem. We'll, we'll, uh, We'll, we'll add that to the motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, if you if you add, then I'll second it. All in favor? Second by Mr. Mr. Tarodi. All in favor? Opposed? Opposed? Ms. Manning is opposing. Okay, your application is approved, sub subject to those changes. Subject to those changes. Okay, we're uh, we're gonna have a. Okay, we're thank gonna... you so much, sir. Thank you, everybody. Okay, we're gonna have we're gonna have a ten minute break. Okay.
Are we on six now? Yes. Well, f five was deferred, wasn't it? Yes. Mr. Chair, your your uh, camera is on. Our camera is on. No, sorry, your voice is on, so it's not. You're not on mute. So it's num number six, right? Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're resuming the session and we're in application number six, which is 133 DeLorraine Avenue. And here we have uh, Babak Haji Shasemi. Are you there? Babak, you're unmuted. Hello, Mr. Chair. Yeah, good morning. Could you please tell us your name and your address for the records here? Yes, my name is Babak uh, Gassemi from Arc Lab Design Studio at 355 uh, Eglinton Avenue West. Thank you. This is for a new dwelling. We have 12 variances and uh, some letters of objection and you have forestry. Could you please make a... Uh, a small presentation for five minutes. We have three more speakers here. Uh, Mr. Who, Chair, I'm uh, not sure if the other members of the pan are they? Yeah. Members, are we are we back into session? I don't see. Thank you for thank you for reminding me. That's uh okay, members, are you here? Okay. I still am uh, Miss Manning. Okay, so we have to, we have the quorum. Um, okay, uh, we're, I repeat, we have here this, um, this um, 133 uh, DeLorraine, and uh, we have three more spe three speakers who want to speak to this application, so we'll ask you to please make your presentation five minutes, and then we'll, we'll see if the members have any questions. <coughs> Um, hello, everyone. My name is Baba Akasemi. I'm the principal designer and, um, from Arc Lab Design Studio and agent for 133 Delorean Avenue. I would like to begin by making an amendment to our uh, proposal. Um, I would like to re remove variance number two, 
which deals with our setback for our eaves to the property line, as well as variance number 12, which deals with our proposed height under the old Toronto zoning bylaw. So you're moving number two and number 12, right? That's correct. Okay, please go ahead. Continue. <clears throat> the application before you is a proposal to build a two-story new modern dwelling with an integral garage. Um, so we started our uh, process uh, by working with an arborist uh, with the, uh, on this application because of the city tree in the front of the property line. Um, our, we've, uh, we, we, did a, we did a lot of planning in, in order to make sure that this development does not have any adverse impact uh, and our, our proposal does not make any, uh, uh, does not create a, a reason to remove this tree. <coughs> um, we made a pro uh, presentation uh, uh, about our proposal, which I'm gonna uh, ex uh, explain through. Um, we have a, uh, we have um, a few variances that are very uh, uh, minor in nature. Uh, our first variance deals with uh, the uh, f most of the variances are because of the uh, location of the building. Uh, we are legally allowed to have three feet uh, side yard setback on each side on each side of the uh, proposed dwelling. However, what we did, we actually moved the building towards uh, the west side by one foot in order to have a uh, legal uh, unprotected opening on the east side of the property. Therefore, we have right now we have a two feet side yard setback on the west side and a four feet side yard setback on the east side. Now this creates uh, uh, variances for uh, our pr uh, pr property line, uh, for our uh, porch uh, and steps uh, in the front. Um, in terms of uh, GFA, uh, we really studied the whole neighborhood. Uh, this is a very busy and intense neighborhood. There, uh, most of the buildings are located uh, very close to each other. Our neighbor to the uh, west side actually has less than a foot setback to the property line. Uh, but again, we try to be very moderate and be very careful with our uh, proposal so that we don't have any adverse impact on the context on, uh, of this property. Uh, our FSI is, uh, again, very, uh, uh, our uh, minor variance for FSI is very, uh, is very minor in nature. We are asking for 4% FSI. Uh, and we studied the, the area. There's a lots of development in the area with FSI, approved FSI of over uh, 70%. Um, uh, but that's, uh, that I'll be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank you. Okay, we'll, back, we'll be back to you. We have a couple more people to speak. Geraldine McDonald, are you there? Uh, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, Geraldine's not on the call. We'll, uh, we'll, try to, we'll try to reach out and get back to her. Uh, if we Thank you. Connect. Thank you. We'll reach her back. Okay. Uh, Kathy uh, Lovegreen. Kathy, are you there? I'm, yes, I'm here. Kathy Lovegreen, 139 Delorraine Avenue. Thank you. So please tell us what's your concern about this application. Yeah. Uh, thanks to uh, you, Mr. Chair, and the committee members for hearing our objection. Um, first of all, I'd like to say that we, my husband and I, who, who wrote the, our submission together, fully support the letters of, of objection that you received from Jane Bunter, Walter Taz, John Simonton, Jody McDonald, and Jack Spitz. Um, and we just on, just before I go forward, I just want to note that at no point, just in terms of community involvement and having a bit of an inf information session, the developer at no point contacted any of us to describe what the what the developer was proposing to do it would have it would have helped i think um, we note that eight of the 12 variances are not minor uh, some of them uh, are requesting up to a 46 percent variance from the bylaw so 
uh, I'm requesting that the uh, committee reject these as not minor variances. And the development does not comply with the official plan in that it does not um, uh, sit in to the community uh, around it. It, it is a, a standout building much, much higher, much wider, much, much larger than the adjacent properties. Uh, in summary, we're, we're not against redevelopment. We understand that cities need to refresh or they die. So we, we, we're, it's not nimbyism um, that we're, that we're uh, presenting here. We simply want to state that the building is too high, too wide for, for the space uh, for either side property. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just a second, uh, please. Is there any question for the speaker? No? Okay. The, um, Mr. Chair, uh, Geraldine is now on the call. Oh, thank you. Uh, Geraldine McDonald, uh, could you please state your name and address for us? Geraldine, are you still there? Geraldine, you're and, and Okay. Yeah, your name is. Hello, and name? yes, and yeah. I'm at 120 Delarane Avenue. Thank you. So tell us what's your concern. Okay, so um, I'm a neighbor right across the street, and uh, I submitted my letter saying that I didn't agree with variances two, three, four, five, and six. And today I'm going to add concerns about variances seven, eight, ten, and eleven, and I think they should be rejected. So number seven, extra floor space they're asking for. It's a very large, large lot on Delarain. They have 133 feet, and I think they have plenty of room to build a very large house without going asking for an extension. So I think seven should be rejected. Number eight, the request to move their house further west, leaving only 0.61 meters between the two houses. No reason is given. This is unacceptable. Please reject. Number 10, exterior stairs, asking to extend the width. No reason given, so can only assume the owners love bigger over better and have little respect for the official plan which creates communities that are cohesive and blocks which are community oriented. Please reject. Number 11, asking for the front access stairs to the home to be closer than allowed to the house to the west. As number 133 Delarain is unusually wide, I think there's ample room to have front stairs to enter the home without having to go further west than is allowed. Please reject. Okay, thank you. They're asking for with these 12 variances and therefore all of them to be rejected. Thank you. Okay, yeah, uh, just a second please, any question? Okay, so we still have um, uh, John uh, John Simonton. Are you there, Simonton? John Simonton, are you there? Yeah, John Simonton, one thirty-one Delarain. Thank you. So please go ahead. Tell us your concern. So where the property to the east of the one thirty-three? I would echo my comments from uh, Geraldine and Kathy. The variances that are not desirable for the appropriate development of the land. They're all major. Also, I wanted to comment that no effort was made to talk to us. And the reason that that is important, very important to us, because they're going to be, if unfortunately this monstrosity proceeds, there are going to be implications, legal implications, re-adverse possession on our side, for instance, with the, the garage coming down. So um, I'm going to have to get a lawyer involved, and this is going to go on a long time. Also, I'm not quite sure of the... Um, the wall coming over onto our property. I need to get access to our our wall because we have a vine there which requires periodic maintenance. As the vine gets up into our east troughs and I have to go go up a ladder on the driveway to get at to get at it. Now addressing specific variances, you'll see my comments on three and four regarding uh, carbon emissions, which of course everybody knows would 
current climate situation. These are very important. So these these variances are too too big. And I, I know you didn't want to talk about the tree at this point, but the tree is also wrapped into it. The person I'm dealing with at the tree production and plan review has told me that these applicants want that tree removed and their and their actions that they've taken so far prove that they've been digging at the roots, exposing the roots, trying to kill the tree, et cetera. Now, the major variance five proposed height of the walls. We we enjoy our backyard. We've lived here for over 40 years. Two, two meter high, increased height. It's gonna take away a lot of light. We spend a lot of time in our backyard, grandchildren, children, et cetera. It's gonna be a mess. So I don't think that should be approved. And while, while I'm mentioning this, they're trying to sneak in a, a, a back deck into this application. It's nowhere mentioned on the variances, but how, how do we fight this back deck, which is going to be extremely high deck and overlook our property. I, I don't even understand how that can be introduced in, in this application. Can you help me out there? So we're waiting for you to finish, sir, so we can have the applicant respond to all the concerns. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. Are you, are you finished? Sure. So I don't know. I, I hope. Yes, yes, sir. Hopefully everybody's seen a picture of the proposed structure, what it's going to look like. It looks like an office building, which is not in the character of the development of the neighborhood and therefore fails in the official plan where you're supposed to have a complete cohesive blocks and co cohesive neighborhoods. Likewise, a double garage in the area that doesn't that doesn't fit in with the official plan. So the general intent and the purpose of the official plan is not being maintained. Maintained. It seems like they are following a similar pattern to the property they own on Summer Heights, which is up for sale for five million. Go in, build a huge property flip it to max tax benefits. Okay. And we'll so I'll leave, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Thank you. We'll see if there is, if members have any question. Any question for the speaker? No? Okay. So we're, um, there's nobody else left, right? Okay. So, um, Mr. Um, Shasemi, could you could you come back, please, and respond to those uh, concerns? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Chair. Uh, just wanted to explain, uh, respond to some of the comments that were made uh, by the neighbors. Um, so, if you look at our site plan, although we have a side yard setback, we we are asking for a side yard setback of two feet on the west side of the property. We actually moved the porch and the stairs further away from the property line. That's uh, basically, uh, we, uh, we, again, we wanted to do our best to minimize our impact on the, on the neighbors. But since the, uh, on the front of the property, we don't have much room. The, the houses on Delorain are very, they don't have a much uh, big of a front yard. We had to actually shorten our stairs and rotate it. That's uh, so that we don't have a very long stairs. We wanted to be away from the tree protection zone. That's why we have that variance for the width of the stairs. Um, in terms of uh, the, uh, the excavation within the tree protection right now, uh, Mr. Chair, that's a, a procedure to make sure that uh, it's a tree exploration procedure uh, recommended and requested by forestry just to make sure this driveway uh, will not impact this tree and again we, uh, we are trying to be ethical and professional and respectful uh, with, with our community and uh, with the uh, city department. Um, 
In terms of our side wall height, if you refer to our side elevations, we are asking for an 8.96 side wall height only in front of the uh, house. Uh, on this majority of the house, on the side and on the rear side, uh, we, we are asking for an 8.5 uh, side wall height. Uh, and the reason for it is that we wanted to maintain a, a modern contemporary look in the facade while uh, minimizing the impact on the uh, the two neighbors on the either side of the property. Um, I don't I don't have any further comments. Uh, okay, okay. So just thank you. please go over the changes you're making. You want to you want to remove a number two? You said number two and number twelve. And number twelve. Okay. Uh, members, any question? Ms. Atarodi. Yes. Yes, hi. I just also have, have one a little bit of explanation regarding variance number three, front yard landscaping, which they asked for 39.9% versus 50%, and also variance number four, um, the front yard soft landscaping. Yes. Um, if you refer to our site plan again, the, the tree protection uh, area is fairly large and it's basically making us to uh, move our driveway, driveway around the tree protection. It's actually a very, it's not a very comfortable uh, access for my client, but we wanted to make sure that we, are, we can build this driveway uh, without with having minimized impact to the tree. That extra room that the, the turn is taking uh, for the driveway and the extra room that the steps are uh, taking because of rotating it uh, 90 degrees as opposed to coming straight down create, is creating those uh, uh, variances. They are very technical in nature, um, I have to say. And I also um, appreciate uh, if you give some explanation regarding variance number five, which is the side exterior main bar, which you asked for um, 8.96 meter versus seven meter. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you refer to our site elevations, um, you see that uh, the 8.96 side wall uh, height is only for the front of the property. Uh, due to the contemporary and modern design of the house. That, uh, the sidewall height it will be uh, uh, reduced to 8.5 meters. Uh, and if you refer to our presentation package, you'll see all the numbers uh, uh, precisely uh, there. But again, for majority of the uh, side of the house, we have an 8.5 meter uh, sidewall height. Any other question? No? Can I have a motion then, please? Anyone for a motion? Mr. Bartolo? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. And, uh, well, while I've heard what everybody has to say, and I understand that there is um, uh, some resistance to the neighbors, there's, you know, uh, some aspects of what was commented on are, are not within our pur purview, such as, you know, the, the architectural style. If, if there were no variances, people could build the style of homes that, that they feel fit, um, and it wouldn't even show up on our, on our doorstep here. So in reviewing this application, uh, I'm of the opinion that it's uh, generally minor in nature. So I'll put forward a motion to approve this application uh, subject to the following revisions that variance number two be deleted, variance number 12 uh, be deleted and subject to the conditions of the urban forestry memo attached. Thank you. Second, Ms. Manning seconding. All in favor? Opposed? And uh, Mr. Klassen, are you for or against? I'm, uh, I'm abstaining. 
Sorry. Uh, I joined in okay. uh, okay. as the case was underway, so okay. I'm abstaining. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so Mr. Bartolo is uh, is is uh, uh, supporting it. Miss Manning seconding, and all in favor? Unanimous. Okay. So your application is approved unanimously. Sorry, um, Chair. I was opposed. By mistake, I put my... Are you opposed? I mentioned. You're opposed? Yes, I oppose. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, you had your hand with the three of them. Okay. I know. Okay. Sorry. So your application is approved. Subject to the change you made, number 12 and number 2 are being removed and subject to forestry. And Ms. Tarodi is opposing. Thank you very much. Okay. Application number seven, which is six, Courtly Crescent, application number seven. And number seven, we have oh yeah. Mr. Franco Romano. Are you there? Yes, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Franco Romano here on behalf of the owner, 2095 Autumn Breeze Port Credit. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have here um, a new dwelling, uh, 10 variances. We have some letters of uh, objection and forestry. So could you please make your presentation in five minutes and tell us what's the, the merit of the application? Yes, thank you, sir. Uh, if uh, staff could kindly go to the... Uh, the site plan drawing. You will see that the, the site is located on the, the west side of Courtley Crescent. Courtley Crescent is a cul-de-sac. It runs on an angle south from, uh, from Hillhurst. So what you'll see is that, what that means is that the dwellings are located in a staggered condition. So some dwellings are in front and dwellings are behind neighboring properties. So it's not a condition where the street is straight and everybody is lined up. You'll see the property to the north of the subject site that has a building length of about 26 meters. It has two stories, overlooks properties to the south as well as to the north. The subject site today is uh, located within a neighborhood where two to three-story dwellings exist. The existing dwelling today is a two and a half story dwelling. The proposal fits into the pattern of that staggered condition. And you'll also see that the house that is being proposed has a zero meter south side yard setback. Sorry, the existing house has a zero meter side yard, south side yard setback and a one meter north side yard setback. Neighboring properties and properties along the street and in the neighborhood have a similar condition. So that is side yard setbacks that are smaller than the zoning bylaw requires. Same condition exists for floor space index. The house to the north is almost one and a half, one, 1 1.7 times the permitted floor space index and other dwellings that are two and two to three stories in height exceed the 0 0.35, approaching 0 0.6, 0 0.7, even 0 0.79. So what is proposed here is to remove the existing two and a half story dwelling, which also exceeds the, the existing floor space index and construct a new two story dwelling. So the proposal would have side yard setbacks of 0 0.9 meters. The 0 0.9 meters is actually permitted by the zoning bylaw for a lot of this size. This lot has a lot frontage of 11.13 meters. A lot of 11.13 meters is permitted to have a side yard setback of 0 0.9 meters. The zoning that applies to the site requires a minimum lot frontage of 15 meters. And that's why the 1.5 meters is being applied by the zone examiner. So six of the variances that deal with side yard setbacks are technical in nature. The floor space index is also somewhat technical because what is being proposed here is to add about 65 to 70 square meters of floor area compared to what it currently exists today. Again, the existing two and a half proposed two stories. 
In terms of, of what we see for floor space index side yard setbacks, the proposal is consistent with what's found in the neighborhood and has no adverse effect. There is no floor height variance. There is no overall height variance. The one side wall height variance is 67 centimeters, and that is uh, reasonable and appropriate in this neighborhood where two and three story dwellings exist. The front yard soft landscaping variance is for one about one square foot of, um, of sorry, it's just front yard landscaping. The soft landscaping does comply. And in part, what that landscaping variance um, is a result of is you'll see the driveway swinging around from the boulevard. I look, not looking at the photographs. If we go back to the uh, site plan. Please, thank you. Thank you. So the, the driveway that is being proposed to access the, the garage, which is also not a variance, protects the city trees. So you see that it swoops around and that triggers that one square foot uh, front yard landscaping. So subject to any questions, I submit that oh, in terms of building length, you'll see that the building depth complies and that's measured at an angle. And the building length of 18.01 meters is for one side of the building, the other side is 17.1 meters. So subject to any questions, sir, I submit that what's being proposed here is, is minor, supported by planning staff and other staff in the city. Thank you. Well, look at your five minutes, exactly. Um, okay. Thank so, you. Thank you. We'll be back to you after we hear the uh, speakers here. We have Chris and Cynthia Hill. Are you there? Chris and... I will lead it. Chris or Cynthia Hill, can you are you are you there? We drew up last year. Are you talking to us? Uh, 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 Chris and Cynthia, you're unmuted. Debate our roles if necessary. Yeah. Chris, you're unmuted. Long, short sessions or long multiple short. I think they might be on a, another call. Maybe we'll it, go back to this. There's a problem. Yeah, okay. So next one is Jennifer. Huh? Uh, Jennifer Somerset, are you there? Uh, Jennifer Somerset. Jennifer, you're on mute. Yes. Can you, oh, okay. okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Could you please state your name and address? For yes. Us? My name is Jennifer Somerset. I'm one of the owners of Two Portly Crescent. The immediate neighbor to the south of the proposed new building. Thank you. Could you please tell us your concern about this application? Please go ahead. Objections? Can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, sorry. Um, and I have items to add. I uh, submitted photos as well for visualization for all the committee members, which was submitted in the package of September 15th, as you do not know my house and you're not presently here. Number one, the proposed south side setback, side yard left, of an offset of 0 0.90 meters, as opposed to the bylaw of 1.5 meters, has serious consequences for two courtly present. Of immediate concern is the damage caused to the north side of our house during construction in such a narrow space. We have no say in the space from the wall of our house to the property line. The new owners have the options. We do not. We did not build our house. There will be nowhere for the workers to build this new house. What is the justification for such aggressive bylaw variance? We request the committee to set up an escrow, a cash trust account fund to be set up prior to building the new house with our lawyers for damages that occur to our property at Two Portly Crescent. We ask this to be made a condition to approve the proposed plan if you pass it. Then, Complete loss of natural life for us once the new house is built will be completely gone. 
We have 12 windows on the north side of the house. That tells it all. Number two, the height of the proposed new building, which exceeds the bylaw, is also problematic. It does not adhere to the building code and impacts the height of our chimney, which is active. For no fault on our part, we will need to extend our chimney to do restoration to it, probably brace it up to satisfy the building codes at our expense. This sounds completely unreasonable. We then also request the committee to enforce number six courtly present to create a cash trust account with our lawyers again to cover all the costs of our chimney prior to building the new house. Please make this a condition. We would choose the contractor. Number three, the proposed deck balcony in the rear backyard on the west side of the new building is several meters above ground, stretching for the entire width of the building. Since the height is significantly above any fence, we're deprived completely of our privacy and views throughout our backyard. This is completely unacceptable and not at all in keeping with our architecture of the neighborhood. Number four, during construction, the plans that have been submitted will take the present garage down at number six, Portly Crescent. This was, garage was built on the property line 101 years ago and is attached to the house. It has been an extension of our fence in the backyard for years and comes up to our gate, which is on our property. We need access to our gate on our property throughout the entire year. It is very important to, ma to maintain this and very important also to have a very secure fence immediately upon the demolition of the garage. As it must be secure with more than just construction fencing, as we have dogs, we need our dogs secured. Number five, we ask like the other neighbors to request a deferral of this application as the owner slash developer and architect have made no attempt to approach us in person by information drop off consultation whatsoever to discuss anything regarding their plans of the new build. And we are the only house beside them with the same address of two courtly crescent or courtly crescent. We have been here the entire time since they have bought the house. There are only four houses on the street and they approached no one. Thank you for your attention. I do have photos that you've put up on the screen regarding chimney, backyard, etc. One last thing too, sorry. Victoria Owen, who lives at 2 Hillhurst Boulevard, is unable to attend to speak today as she has an emergency. Okay. Um, excuse me. sent me an email. Excuse me, you finished your five minutes and we have to move yes, on. We have lots more people to okay. talk here. So please send Okay, Tori Owen would like me to speak on her behalf. And she sent me an email. She is one of the people registered. Just again, what's, what's her name? Her name is Victoria Owen and Neil at 2 Hillhurst Boulevard. They had an emergency. Yeah, okay. A family emergency. They've asked me to speak as well for them. Yeah, okay. When their name comes up. Yeah, we have her name here. She Thank was you. she was eliminated. So, please uh, you want to add something on your uh, on her behalf? Well, she, she would like me to read what she wrote. So, if I can do, do you want me to do that now? Well, we, yeah, we have to move on. So, please say what you what okay. she said okay. because she was sure. This is from Okay, Vic Tori Victoria Owen at 2 Hillhurst Boulevard. She sent me this at 9.42 a.m. today. We are very much in support of ratcheting back the variances. The Planning Act states if the application fails any of the four tests, the application must fail subsection 45.1. If the variances are too large or too important to be considered minor, such as loss of sunlight, privacy, views, spacing, 
and openness, trees and drainage, and an incompatibility with established built form and character of the neighborhood, and it erodes the aesthetics of the streetscape. In aggregate, the minor variances add up to major variances and must not be allowed to proceed in its current form. And this is from Victoria Owen at 2 Hillhurst Boulevard. Thank you. Yeah, we have a register there. Thank you for speaking on our behalf. And just a second, we'll see if there is any question. Any question for the speaker who speaks for two people? No? Okay. So we'll move to the next one. Um, by the way, is Chris and Cynthia here? Right. Chris, you're unmuted. Um, 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 is that Chris? Or? Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I believe they might still be on another call. Or something. Okay, so we'll, so we'll go to the next one. Yeah? Uh, yes. Next one. Uh, Peter Higgins, uh, are you there? Mr. Higgins. Um, Mr. Higgins, please refrain from touching the unmute button. Staff will unmute you. Uh, Mr. Chair, can we move on to the next speaker? I'm having some technical difficulties. With him too. Okay, we'll uh, we'll wait for him. And uh, the other one is uh, uh, Bashkar Najendra. Are you there? Yeah, yes, I am. Yeah, could you please state your name and address? My name is Bashkar Najendra, and I'm at 406 St. Clair Avenue East. Thank you. So tell us, please, uh, your concern. And you heard... You heard all this, you have something different or you want to add something? I want to add a couple of things. Okay. I first of all, I completely agree with the presentations made thus far. And the main concerns again is 0.9 meters offset as opposed to 1.5. This is needlessly aggressive and where is the justification? This narrow space also creates problems for construction and damage to the north side of two courtly. In addition to the move, the machinery could be a challenge. If, once again, the, the height of the proposed building is problematic. It's not in keeping with the aesthetics and the architecture of the neighborhood. It's a small neighborly community. And when new homes are built or renovations take place, they are done on a consultative basis. In addition, the height of the balcony at the back of the new building is a very tall structure about any fence line and deprives the neighbors of any privacy in the backyards completely. This hugely affects the enjoyment of the garden and the family and the children and everything. Number three, I know you said this is not your purview. Removal of a well-established healthy tree that contributes greatly to the beauty and the environment of the street to accommodate a garage sounds completely unreasonable. All this could be rectified by the owner, the builder, the architect, getting together with the neighbors and arrive at a mutually agreeable compromise. I, I, would, I respectfully ask the committee to make a recommendation that this decision be deferred to give more time for consultations. I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any any question for the speaker? No? Okay. So, uh, Mr. Higgins, are you there? Mr. P I am here, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, please, uh, we know who you are, but we need it to be recorded on the system. Your name and your address, please. Yes, thank you. Peter James Higgins of Peter Higgins Architect Incorporated, 69 Douglas Drive, Toronto, Mary, for W2B2. Thank you. You have five minutes to, to make your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the number of speakers that have already spoken against this proposal have hit on something that is uh, that you cannot, as a committee, uh, determine. There's two, actually, and that is the character of the neighborhood versus the style or character of the house that's proposed. It is completely, completely out of sync with the surrounding neighborhood. I respect that the new owners, developer, architect can essentially do what they want. Their, the zoning bylaws are loose enough for things like a two-car garage trying to swing around a mature tree that is only eight feet from the mutual property line with the south neighbor. Um, that tree will not survive. Um, forestry should be doing more to prevent this. Uh, from happening. Nevertheless, the main thing that we are uh, responding to is, has been echoed, uh, that again, you can't uh, deal with. But this is a community, a very tight-knit community of four houses on a cul-de-sac. And um, the fact that no one has come forward to speak to the neighbours should be something that uh, addresses your thinking about the variances. Um, this is not the way things should be done, and this committee knows that this is not the way I act as an architect. And nevertheless, um, to avoid an appeal, the developer, planner, architect, etc., should consider requesting a deferral because this is going for an appeal 100%. Uh, if they don't do that. And although the variances are reasonably minor, taken together, they are not. Together with the raised deck at the back of the property, which overlooks countless backyards because it is at the end of the street and it will um, view over two, three, four backyards that are further west along Hillhurst, as an example. I don't think this, this is something that should go forward without consultation to the neighbours or with the neighbours, excuse me, and I think a compromise could be reached so that this developer owner can move ahead with something that is more compatible with the neighbourhood and meets the requirements of not only forestry but the neighbour's concerns about height of the sidewalls particularly. Uh, position of the sidewalls in terms of the side yard setbacks and the raised deck at the rear. Thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Any question for this uh, speaker? Okay, so we have one more uh, speaker here, Chris and Cynthia Hill. Were you able to reach them? Hi. Yeah, okay. Yep, I'm okay. here. Yes, please. State your name, please, and address for us. Yeah, my name is Chris Hill. We live at 1 Hillhurst Boulevard, Thank M4R, you. Yeah. K3. Okay, now... We are, we are directly to the west. Okay, so please go ahead, give us your concern about this, and you heard all the objections. Tell us if you have anything new. Yeah, no, my, my biggest concern is the uh, side lot setback. Uh, it's going to come even closer than the uh, existing building uh, to our property. Uh, and as well, we're going to lose quite a bit of light uh, at the uh, south facing part of our house because this house is, as everyone has said, it's a large monolithic wall that's going to be going up. Uh, so it is going to impact our light substantially. So I'd say if I had to summarize, my, my objections would be uh, not so close to the sides of the property line and a smaller house that won't take as big a footprint on the property so that we won't lose as much light. Okay. Okay, thank you. That was very okay. short and complete. Thank you. And see if the members have any questions for the speaker. If not, we're going to get back the agent. We covered all the speakers. Mr. Romano, could you come back, please, and address those concerns? Yes, thank you kindly, sir, for that opportunity. Appreciate staff and uh, welcome all of the uh, all of the input that's being provided by the by the neighbors. I'll speak to the side yard setback first. If we take a look at the public hearing notice, we'll see that in variance number five, 
Merits number five is for landscaping. And this is the one that identifies what the subject site is actually today. The subject site today is 11.3 meter lot frontage. So it says on variance five for a lot with a detached house with a lot frontage of six meters to less than 15 meters, a minimum of 50% of the front yard must be landscaped. And the proposal is 49.1%. The reason I point that out is because the existing lot is an 11.3 meter lot frontage would require under the zoning bylaw a 0 0.9 meter side yard setback. If we look at variance number four, which is just above it, it says the required minimum side yard setback is 1.5 meters, where the required minimum lot frontage is 15 meters to less than 18 meters. This is not a lot that is 15 to 18 meters. So in order to accommodate that technical interpretation, you know, the side yard setback that's being proposed is 0 0.9 meters. That is similar to the one meter that is the north, the existing north side yard setback, and it is larger than the zero meters that is on the south side of the subject uh, dwelling. In terms of building height, the building height is zoning bylaw compliant. First floor height is zoning bylaw compliant. There is no variance for the uh, the rear deck nor the rear deck height. However, Happy to have a condition that a privacy screen be installed along the sides of the rear deck. And that rear deck again projects the permitted 2.5 meters from the rear wall of the existing of the of the proposed house. So there is no um, it's it's permitted by the zoning bylaw. There are no variances associated with that. In terms of natural light, there is no light impact to number to, to the north. The, the property to the north, number one, the last speaker, is about nine meters longer than what is being proposed in terms of building length. It currently overlooks at a second story, my client's property, fully, right into the backyard. That building to the north is beyond the rear yard setback line for the, for the subject property. To the south, there is no loss of natural light. The eaves, the eaves uh, side yard setback and the eaves projection and the overall height is fully zoning bylaw compliant. The 60 odd centimeter uh, wall height variance is reasonable and accommodated within the, uh, the, the overall height permission. So there is no loss of natural light. In terms of the chimney on the neighboring property to the south, that chimney is on the north wall towards the front. So there is no impact on the chimney, particularly since the overall height, the eaves is all zoning bylaw compliant. The front yard trees, there's more than one of them. There's two of them in front of the subject site and one next door. Those are being protected. Uh, I don't see any urban forestry objection and urban forestry has been a, a consulted in terms of the design of that, of that driveway. So the, the front yard tree is being protected. In terms of the fence, the replacement of that uh, portion of the dwelling currently on the subject site that is located upon the property line to the south, certainly a fence is going to be constructed and the owner can consult with the with number two uh, courtly crescent to ensure that the fence is mutually desirable. And I believe um, in terms of, of uh, uh, grading and excavation, the city's building department and the building permit process review is a rigorous one, and they will ensure that all site development occurs on the subject site and on not, not on neighboring properties. So there's no impact in that regard. Um, so subject to any questions, I would, uh, I would submit again that the variances are minor in nature and do indeed respect and reinforce the neighborhood character. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, one question uh, regarding uh, variance number two, uh, you have 65. Uh, how does it fit in the area between 35 requirement and 65 times? Yeah, current, thank you for that question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Currently the existing site today is at 0 0.52. 
So what is being proposed here is to add about 60 to 70 square meters of floor area. Okay. So that's in keeping with, so it's not that it's not that significant of a difference. And okay. and next door and our, and on on neighboring streets, we've got up to 0 0.79. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's my question. And uh, members, any question for the speaker? If no questions, then maybe uh, I need a motion. Mr. Klassen, please go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, I'd like to move to approve this application. I do understand the concerns of the neighbors, although many of those don't apply to the work of the committee. Um, um, so I'd like to move to approve the application, and it is minor, it is in keeping with the four tests uh, and make it subject to urban forestry. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Second. Uh, I have two seconds, Mr. Bartolo and Mr. and Ms. Manning. So, uh, okay. So, Mr. Okay, Mr. Bartolo seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Ms. Uh, Ms. Atarod is opposing. And, sir, Mr. Romano, your application is approved, subject to forestry. Thank you. I appreciate your kind uh, assistance you. and hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. Have a nice day. Okay, so that's seven. seven. Application number eight, which is 90 Elmridge Drive, application 90, uh, application eight, which is 90 Elmridge. And here we have Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn, are you there? What's that? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Hi. Hold a second. Michael Flynn. Yeah, I think I think you have you may have, you may have something in your equipment that's uh, uh, echoing here. Could you please uh, state? To, yeah. Is that better? No. Something. Something. Okay. Something is is cl is clicking there. Uh, See if you have any uh, too many equipment opens, and 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 state your name and. Okay, I'll turn off everything else and see if that helps. Thank you. One moment, please. Thank you. Could you try now your name, please? Is that better? Uh, t well, try to speak, see what happened. Your name and your address. <coughs> Excuse me. Michael Flynn, 90 Cordova Avenue, Toronto. Yeah, no, it's still echoing. Uh, if you want, speak softly, see if it works. If not, check your equipment again, please. Hmm. I only have my computer on now. Let me try and go to speaker and see if that works. Uh, Michael, I think you just might have a really sensitive phone, so if you are shuffling, then we can hear it. Is that any better? Uh, well, sp uh, speak I'm up. Now on your name and your address, see if it, if it works. Michael Flynn, 90 Cordova Avenue. Well, well let's, uh, okay, uh, so go, please go ahead, tell us your concern, I mean, your uh, merits for <laughs> the application. You have, this is a new dwelling with eight variances. Transportation has no objection. And uh, please tell us, tell us how, it, how, it, how do you think it's a merit of this application? Yes, sir, thank you. Uh, first of all, planning has no concerns. As you stated, transportation has no concerns. Forestry has a condition, which is a standard condition. And so you're hearing me 
you okay? Well, you're still making lots of noise there. I don't know. Uh, try again. Now it's picking up all my sh paper shuffling. Um, so this is a new home, but many of the variances are, I don't want to say misleading, but uh, less understandable than uh, ordinarily would be the case. So for example, on variance number one, the maximum floor space index, they're allowed 0 0.6, and the building department has calculated it at 0.83. That includes what is being referred to as a third floor, which is a loft, and only part of the attic. But when you use things that way, the interpretation by building department is that you include the entire space. So the third floor is uh, overcalculated in my view. And if you remove the third floor, then the number would be 0.66. So this house presents as a two-story house with a roof. And then you have this loft space in the roof area. So I think the impact of this additional space is negligent or negligible, sorry. And uh, there is, in fact, no impact. So from as you're walking uh, your dog down the street type thing, it's a two-story two house with a roof, much like every other house. Uh, the driveway is not a significant uh, variance and has no negative impact. And as I stated, transportation has no interest in that. Then we get, come to uh, length and depth. In this case, we have a standard length of house with a deck on the rear. And under the deck is a storage space. Because of that, building department is including the length of the deck and the storage space in the length and depth of the house. But with, if you don't count that, the actual depth, let me make sure I have the right one here. Okay, this one is length is 18.74, which is still a variance but much less significant. So even though it says 22.56 meters because of the way they calculate it, that is more of a technical variance than a real variance. And it has more to do with the underground storage space than it does with anything else. The length is the same case. The minimum rear yard setback is again created by this underground storage space and is actually a much better condition than building would have you to believe. Uh, now, height of all side yards. Okay. The actual measurement that they're using is the top of roof measurement. Because it has a flat area on the on the roof, and because of the uh, area in the attic is being used as habitable space, they are calculating the height from average grade all the way to the bottom side of the ceiling in the third story. But the actual exterior height of the, the walls from average grade is 6.75 meters. So again, this is a technical variance and it's a matter of interpretation. And we've been debating this for years because when the, the bylaw was written by planning department, they did not expect that building department would measure to the bottom of the highest ceiling in the house as a as a calculation for the exterior wall height. So in fact, it's, there is no exterior wall that even approaches the height 
this is being uh, calculated at. And once again, there is no impact. Uh, sir, uh, we ask you on, to. Uh, sir, sir, could you please uh, summarize here because we have uh, we have other speaker here, and you finished your five minutes. So. We'll oh, be, I'm sorry. We'll be back. We'll be back to you. Okay, I would suggest to you that. We're going to be back to you. I suggest to you that. Okay, I'm done. Go yeah, ahead. <laughs> yes, we're going to come back to you after the speaker here. Okay, we have a speaker, and we'll come back. Yes. To you. Thank you. Okay, we have here Michelle Bauer. Michelle Bauer, are you there? I have a Hello? Michelle, are you there? Hi, yes, thank you. Yeah, could you please um, I, please stay before we go, could you please state your name and address for the records here? Yes, Michelle Bauer, 91 Elm Ridge Drive. Thank you. I live across the street. Thank you. So tell, tell us what's your concern. Okay. So uh, I'm listening to the explanation from the uh, agent, and he's trying to say that what's interpretation and what's bylaws are different and that, you know, the, the bylaws say one thing, but you interpret it differently. That's uh, not how I see it. It seems to me, number four, the, uh, the frontage, the lot frontage, you're allowed maximum of 17 meters. They're going up six meters forward towards the street. Um, the depth goes back four meters than what is uh, permitted. The height goes up a meter from what's permitted. And the rear setback is five meters more. When I add it all up, it looks like there's 11 meters more house on that property than there is now because while he's saying it's a new build there is a house there now that they're going to tear down and they want to put up a house that's much larger than the footprint that's there now we also have a lot of flooding on our streets when it rains and i'm concerned that taking away some of that extra um earth is going to um impact the flooding situation so uh, that is that is my concern in terms of numbers four, five, six, and seven. And while they are saying that transportation has no concerns, I have yet to see uh, that they have studied the traffic patterns on the street. Right now, Elm Ridge is like Eglinton Avenue West. Because of the LRT, everybody is taking our street instead. Kids go to school along that street. Parents are driving along that street. And there are times where my husband has to stand out in the street so I can back out of my driveway. Also, in front of number 90 and 89, there is a space between the medians in the street so that people on either side of the street can pull through the median instead of going entirely around the circle park, which is part of our street. It's going to impact the flow of traffic and the safety for the children walking to school if they're, if that area is plugged up or if the there is too many vehicles on the street as well. So I have seen nothing from transportation that says they have looked into that at all. So, so those are my concerns. Thank you. Yeah, we'll... Uh... We'll have the agent back to respond to those concerns. In the meantime, any question for the speaker? No? Okay. Uh, that's all we have as far as the speakers. Mr. Uh, Flynn, could you come back, please, and address the concern sure. of, the, of the speaker, okay? Yes. Uh, I did uh, respond to her letter of objection uh, in writing. It's on your uh, AIC, but I don't know where she's talking about a front yard problem because there is no front yard setback variance. Uh, flooding is a different animal, and it may be an area problem, but obviously when you get a building permit, you have to do a grading plan, and the grading plan has to show that you will maintain rainwater or what they call stormwater on your property and not have it issuing 
onto other properties. So that's part of a building permit operation. It has nothing to do with this process. Uh, she also complains about the traffic, and unfortunately, we don't have any control of the roadway or this cut through. But what transportation is talking about in their comment is the width of the driveway and the length of the driveway, and that it can contain a parked car. That's all they're referring to, and they are not addressing the, the traffic on the street, which is not part of our control either. Uh, and her letter goes on to talk about construction noise and traffic and parking and all kinds of things like that. But these are normal things that happen during uh, house construction or any kind of construction. And we will do our best, and I have actually been on sites before, make, make, making sure that contractors do not plug up the roadway and do not block other properties' access. And in this particular case, she is most concerned, I believe, with the parking space directly in front of her home where her father parks. And I understand that concern, and I would um, say that we will make every effort to make sure that that area is left open for her father to park in. So we will restrict our contractors from parking in that area at any time. Uh, so that's the best I can do for her. The other things that I would uh, speak to, I already have spoken to, and all I can say is that these variants are being requested, although some of them appear to be larger than the impact is, go is going to be, are in fact technical. So the length and depth is technical because of this underground storage area and the deck sitting on top of it. But the actual length of the house is legal from front wall to back wall. The actual height is legal, it's conforming. And it's only this interior wall measurement, and they call it exterior wall measurement, but it's actually interior wall measurement, that it creates the variance for that wall height that they're referring to. So I think overall that this is a fairly good application and it has very little impact. And if you looked at the, uh, the map that's associated with the notice, you'll see that the two abutting houses, east and west, are very long and very large homes, significantly larger than what my client has today, that exists today. And he is more or less building in keeping with what exists in the neighborhood, particularly on his east and west side. So I think that this application meets the four tests. I don't think it has any significant impact on anybody else. If you're walking your dog down the street, and I know I said this before, but it, it's true, you can't tell if a house meets the height requirements or not because nobody knows where average grade is except the architect. <laughs> and you just can't tell the difference. So this is not going to be stand out in any way particularly. And the impact of the length Sir, is you, there is none. Can you please summarize? You're reaching your five minutes here. Well, I have pretty much summarized. So I believe it meets the four tests when we ask for your approval. Thank you. Members, any question? No question? Can I have a motion then? I have two, uh, two hands here. So which one was first? <laughs> Miss... Uh, can I have a motion, please? Ms. Ms. Atarodi, go ahead. Okay. To you, Mr. Chair, I would like to put forward a motion um, to, I, I listened to the applicant, to neighbors. I, when I first 
uh, application I had concern about bidding length and depth and um, and when I listened to and also uh, the exterior main, main wall height but when I listened to applicant so I've been convinced that this is minor therefore I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application subject and also transportation have no condition um, subjected to urban forestry only thank you second Ms. Manning is seconding. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay, sir, your application is approved unanimously, subject to forestry. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman and members. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, application number nine, which is 354 Briar Hill. Application number nine, 354 Briar Hill Avenue. And here we have uh, Mr. Uh, Ali Shakiri. Mr. Shakiri, are you there? Yes, sir. Ali Shakiri, 326 Shepherd Avenue East. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Uh, we have here two. Uh, we have to convert the front porch to living space with two variances. Uh, two variances only. Let me just take a look here. Uh, yeah. Okay, two variances. Okay, can you make very small presentation as far as the uh, as the uh, FSI and all that stuff? So we have no no other speaker, just uh, just you. So please make a very short presentation, please. Uh, indeed, uh, this is a very clear application, sir. Uh, we're asking for two variances, as you mentioned. Um, the objective of this app, this uh, variance is, um, is to convert the, the existing front porch into the um, interior space. Uh, same thing uh, has been done for the other two neighbors on either side and for many other uh, houses in the uh, close proximity. Um, I don't have any further comment, but I'm happy to answer any question. Thank you. Members, Thank you. members any question? And uh, if not, uh, maybe a motion? Ms. Ms. Zatarodi? Yes, um, to you, Mr. Chair, it's, it's a very straightforward application. Therefore, I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with no condition. Thank you. Second? Ms. Ma Ms. Manning, seconding or in favor? Okay, unanimous. Sir, your application is approved unanimously with no conditions. Thank you very much. Okay. Number 10, which is 146 Alexis Boulevard, application number 10. And here we have Chad Kennedy. Are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Your name and your address, please. Uh, Chad Kennedy, 3030 Breakwater Court, Mississauga. Thank you. So we have here uh, just uh, one variance, n nothing else. Members, do we need a presentation here? No. Okay, sir, we don't need any presentation. We can make a decision. Do you need to say something before or not? Uh, no, not unless anybody has any questions. I think everything is pretty straightforward. Thank you. Okay, question or can I have a motion then, please? Ms. Manning? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, I think this is a very straightforward application with only one variance. I'd like to put forward a motion to approve this application Thank with you. no conditions. Thank you. Second? Mr. Bartolo seconding. Any favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, so unanimous, your, your application is unanimously approved. And there is no. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Chad Kennedy. Okay. Application number 11, which is 69 Bowen Court, application number 11. And here we have Domenico Conforti. Are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Okay, can you please just state your name and address for us? Uh, my name is Dominic Conforti, uh, 70 Gibson Drive, Unit 13, Markham. Okay. And I'm the agent for the applicant. Okay, we have here a uh, renovation, 
11 variances, five letters of support, transportation, no objection, and staff report refused variance number eight. Could you please make a small presentation and address the, uh, address the question of the, uh, the driveway? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is an application for renovation of an existing dwelling. It's not a rebuild, so it uh, it was approved under the original uh, bylaw of North York 7625, which is amal amalgamated with bylaw 569213. Um, as indicated, this is not a new build, it is a renovation. And under the exemptions permitted under section 10520 of the new bylaw, it permits uses specifically related to lawful existing buildings and lots. And unfortunately, if you look at this uh, bylaw under the original 7625 bylaw, R3 zone permits a setback for lots of 18 meters or less frontages of 7.5 meters. The existing building, which is gonna be the ultimate building that's presented, the setback is 7.51. So therefore, if you grant the, uh, the, the, uh, the afforded exemptions under this bylaw, which treated the amalgamation, there really isn't the requirement for the change as the 7.5 would govern. That being said, uh, just to simplify in general what the renovation entails, the first floor structure will remain, the second floor structure will remain, for the exception of addition of six inches to the second floor, making it nine feet. The roof pitch, which is presently 12-12, will be replaced with a 4-12 pitch, making the house less imposing and favorable from a street uh, perspective, streetscape perspective. The existing foundations will be maintained. Uh, two of the garage doors at the front of the property, the entrance will be eliminated and there will be one garage door. Uh, prior to us making the submission to uh, the city for a zoning review, we met, we submitted an application to its TRCA as uh, the lands are uh, part of a restrictive covenant under the subdivision agreement on the northerly and easterly limits of the property. Uh, TRCA requested that we conduct the slope stability analysis, which we did. We satisfied them with respect to the treatments for the driveway and the positioning of the driveway. And in effect, they've stamped uh, our site plan and provided us uh, support for variances 9, 10, and 11. The driveway proposed for this, uh, this renovation, which drains naturally as the grades do from front to back, um, do not provide the same concern, I believe, that's what staff is speaking to bylaw as it was introduced in item eight. The, the, the concern or the intent of the bylaw, as I recall over the years, was to prevent people from putting reverse driveways on existing streets, whereby the driveways actually flowed into the garage door and there'd be retaining walls on the side. And many of these areas where the uh, flooding occurred, there were areas that had deficiencies in infrastructure that were built a number, number of years ago. In our specific case, um, our doors are situated in such a way that they're north facing. They are not perpendicular to the driveway. You will not have water running into the doors. They will just, the water will be running to the backyard. And when this development was designed in, in the approximately year 2000, it introduced new standards for stormwater management. Uh, TRCA reviewed those and they have no issues with respect to flooding. And as well, uh, you know, with respect to the bylaw and its intent, in this case, the configuration of the driveway and the slope really does not provide the concerns of flooding that they've introduced in their report. Um, furthermore, with respect to safety, and that was also part of that bylaw, people used to back out of their reverse driveways and be safety concerns for residents or pedestrians. In this case, we've introduced a hammerhead at the end of the driveway, which permits the car to front out and thereby not conflicting with pedestrian traffic. Transportation has approved uh, the access and they have no objection to the variance, as you stated. Um, a lot of these variances, as you can see, might be housekeeping, um, and some of it are generated with respect to new bylaws, such as the reverse driveway and establishing the basement as the first floor. 
which staff has indicated is a technical issue and really not uh, the house exists. The house is going to have the same envelope and therefore it should be treated as a rebuild, not a rebuild, but a, a renovation. Uh, with respect to uh, the house itself it, and the project proposal, we suggest that it is minor. It meets the intent of the zoning by the official plan. Okay, and you're, uh, it's compatible. You're up to your five minutes, yes. sir. Your five I'm minutes. I'm done, sir. Thank you. Okay, you're done. Okay. Thank you. Uh, did you respond to uh, various number eight that they say refuse it? Yes, I did. And, and, and that, again, it's the intent of the original bylaw was to deal with areas that had infrastructure issues, which prevent, which allowed flooding on streets and ultimately to the driveways. Our garages that we're proposing at the back of the units do not are not perpendicular to the driveway. They're actually set back and parallel to the driveway. Any water running along the back will ultimately end up in the catch basin in the back of the house. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions? Yeah. Any question? No. Can I have a motion then, please? Mr. Uh, Mr. Klassen, yeah, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I'd like to move to approve the application, but to refuse variance eight as recommended by staff. Thank you. Thank you, and there is no conditions. Okay. Uh, second. Can I have a second, please? Mr. Bartolo seconding, all in favor? Unanimous, thank you. So, sir, your application is unanimously approved and uh, except for variance number eight, which is refused. Unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, unfortunately. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> number 12. Number 12. Which uh, Mr. Chair, do you mind if we take five real quick? Sorry, you want to break, yeah? Just a couple of minutes, if you don't mind. Yeah, okay. Um, is he online already? Uh, is the gentleman online already? Uh, Adrian. He's online already. Okay, just one, one short one. We have online the uh, gentleman, and we'll have a break, okay? Uh, Adrian Ayakoveli, are you there? Adrian? Adrian? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, could you please state your name and address for us, please? Adrian Iacovelli, 73 De Bear Gardens. Okay, thank you. We have here rear deck, one variance, three letters of support. Members, do we need the presentation here? No? Okay, sir, uh, we don't need the presentation. Did you want to add something or we just go to committee? No, that's fine. Go to committee. Thank you. Thank you. Can I have a motion there, please, or a question? Can I have a motion? If you, at least you have a question, I have here two hands. Could I have a motion? Mr. Klassen, Mr. Klassen was first. Mission, Mr. Klassen, uh, you have your hands. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, this is minor. It does meet the uh, four tests. I like to move to approve this application. Thank you. Without Second. conditions. No condition. Okay. Thank you. Uh, second, Mr. Bartolo. All in favor? Okay, sir. Your application is approved, and there is no conditions. Now we need a break. Thank you. Uh, how about uh, what? Ten minutes? Yeah, ten minutes. Okay, we're going to have ten minutes break, and we'll be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in session and we're in application number 13, which is 42 McGillivray Avenue, application 13. And here we have Aida Evangelista. Are you here? Miss Evangelista? Good. Hey, well, good, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Hi, we haven't uh, seen Hello. Yeah, we haven't talked to you for a long hi. time. Okay, go ahead, please. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Just so, a second, please. Yeah. We, we have here. This is a. Uh, yeah, you know, you know your name. You mentioned your name and your address. Um, mm -hmm. Three variances for new dwelling. We have staff reports mm -hmm. that indicated that you modifying number two and number three, and we have a condition. Correct. Condition per uh, elevation Correct. drawing and condition of forestry. Mm -hmm. so please go ahead your five minutes and tell us what you're changing to, what uh, what variance you want to change and to what. Okay. Um, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we are uh, modifying variance number two. Uh, we have worked with uh, planning staff and planning staff feels that with modifying the height, um, it's very consistent with the um, the properties in the neighborhood, with the homes in the neighborhood. So therefore, variance two, the new height will be 8.79 meters. Okay. And number three? Okay. And number three, the height under the old bylaw, 7625, will now read 9.62 meters. 9.6, okay. So you're on. Yeah, 9.62. Oh, 62. Yes. Okay, so... Yes. So um, what we're proposing, uh, this application was in front of the committee in 2016 with uh, many more variances, approximately seven variances. Um, we've changed the look of the home. Um, we've uh, removed many of the variances and now uh, modified two. We do have, we are asking for a lot coverage of 36.3%. However, um, I will say that even though we are asking for coverage, if we remove all the pop-outs at the front, at the side, and at the back, the coverage, you know, and that's what actually contributes to that additional lot coverage. Um, if we remove those pop-outs around the house in its entirety, and it's just, you know, those, uh, it's to give the home some, you know, some articulation, some interest, right? Um, to break up the, the walls, the facades of the walls. So, and that's what creates that 36%. However, if we were to just do like a square box um, per se, um, we would have a coverage of approximately just shy of uh, 32%. So what we're proposing is very characteristic. You see the, um, the submission um, for the members where I've highlighted on page two, you'll see the home and you'll see the adjacent homes are quite large uh, also. And uh, page two um, highlights the overall height is taken to the top of the parapet. Um, and the parapet is approximately uh, 0.6. Six. And you'll see that this area uh, has undergone and is undergoing a lot of re revitalization. So what we're proposing is very characteristic to, to the neighborhood, uh, be it on McGilvery, Kelso, which is just at the top of the street. Um, and I've just taken a sprinkling of the block um, around this particular uh, property. And uh, also... Staff is also, you know, in uh, concurring that we are maintaining um, the consistent pattern of the development of the neighborhood. And I am open to any questions that you may have. Okay. Um, the, um, is the pattern of the neighborhood is 36.3 as far as the coverage? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, I did have a, a 
quite a conversation with plan with planning and our coverage is very consistent and again because the pop outs at the front of the house um, at the side of the house where we have the fireplace on the east side um, you know that is what's contributing to uh, our Percentage. our additional okay. coverage okay. but but it doesn't affect I, I would like to just add one thing um, you know we have no landscaping variance we have no side yard variance um, our length is 14.95 so we've we've kept it you know okay. quite um, you know quite tight okay thank you we don't have anybody else here for uh, to speak so uh, members any question there is a there is a modification for a variance number two and three, and please go ahead. Ms. Sataro, do you have a question? Yes, just a question regarding the variance number one, the lot coverage that you also asked. How much was the lot coverage that um, that had been approved before? Because you mentioned this was before committee in 2016. Um, prior to, in the, in the previous, the lot coverage was 30, 33%. Thank you. So what they did with the previous application through you, Mr. Chair, to, to Member Terody, um, what they did was they went more with um, height and uh, they went more with the height and uh, meanwhile in the length. Okay. And my other question is that this um, because some of have a condition that it will be uh, uh, it will try to be East to elevation drawings, the new elevation drawings. Uh, does the new elevation drawings reflect the building height? I, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, I did submit um, the new elevation uh, drawings to staff uh, uh, prior to the hearing today. And uh, my in my submission, it also reflects the new height. Jesus. Very good. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. So, so that the new the, the new uh, drawings reflects the change already. Okay. That is correct, Mr. Chair. Okay. Any other question? If not, can I have a motion then, please? Miss uh, Miss Manning. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, subject to the, the following changes uh, to variance number two, uh, which has been changed to 8.79 meters, and variance number three, which has been changed to 9.62 meters for the building height. Um, I believe this is a, a minor variance and that it meets, these are minor variances and that they meet the four part tests. I'd like to put forth a motion to approve this application um, subject to the conditions of forestry and also um, tying it to the elevation drawings. Very good. Thank you. Second. Mr. Klassen seconding all in favor. Thank you. Unanimously, your application is approved subject to those uh, changes you made. Subject to the condition of the elevation and subject to forestry. What's Thank you. That's there. Okay. Application number 14, which is 15 Montresor Drive. And here we have a uh, Eshan Gumi, are you there? Yes, sir. Eshan Gumi, could you please state your name and address for us? <coughs> Hello, are you still there? Eshan, you're unmuted. He said hello, right? I thought he said hello. Esan, you can talk. We're waiting. 
for you. Hishan Gumi, are you there? Hello. Yeah, okay, hi. Could you please state your name and address? Hello. Do you hear us? Isan, you're unmuted. I can hear you now, sorry. I have some difficulty connecting. Oh yeah, can, we can see that. So, could you please state, try to state your name and address for us? Yeah, my name is Esan Gomi. The address is 15 Montreso Drive, and I'm the owner of the subject property. Thank you. Okay, so we have here, we have here the um, a new dwelling with 10 variances. Staff reports indicated that you want to modify number three and number 10. And uh, they're also asking to refuse variance number four and number six. And that's a transportation conditions and uh, forestry only. So could you please make your presentation and tell us and tell and confirm what the changes you want to make. Okay, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so first of all, I would like to mention that we are going to make a modification to variance number three and number ten, as per city staff recommendation. So those are for uh, height for uh, bylaw number five six nine two thousand thirteen. So we're going to reduce it from uh, eight point five to eight meter. And also for the old bylaw, we reduced the height from 9.10 to 8.6 meter. This is uh, this is very, uh, this is for variance number 10, right? No. Yeah, this yeah number three is 8.5 to 8 meter, and for variance number 10 is from 9.10 to 8.6 meter. Okay. All right. And uh, could you could you address the the uh, the question they asked? To yeah. Refuse variance number four and number six. Absolutely. If you can put up the presentation, so I'm going to uh, provide some explanation and context around uh, these two items, which they are uh, basically very technical. So in general, uh, I would like to mention that the design of this house is a complex and challenging design due to a constraint imposed by the lot being irregular shape and the front of the lot being on the curve, and additional TRC requ uh, requirement, and also 10 feet utility easement from the city of Toronto on the side of this property at the north side. So due to the complex nature of the design, we have decided to go through multiple early consultation with the stakeholders and considering their recommendation. The consultation are including, but not limited to the discussions with the immediate neighbors, completion of TRC early concept development, and implementation of the city staff recommendation. As you can see in the file, we have provided letter of support from all immediate neighbors, and the total of 10 letter of supports, all from addresses in the same street. So the design has been fully explained to the neighborhood and also has a strong support from the neighbors. We also gone through early concept development with the TRCA, which this land is regulated by the TRCA, mm -hmm. and also we incorporated city staff recommendation. So I would like to address two uh, concerns from the city staff planning in regards to the front setback. I'm going to start with the front setback. Uh, in, in regards to the front setback, there are three main technical challenges that we are facing here. Irregular shape of the lot, lot being on the curve, and the TRCA setback requirements. The additional setback requirement imposed by the TRCA resulted that building to be pushed toward the front line, uh, front yard of the building. In addition, are you still there? We lost you. The house is in the zigzag shape, as you can see on the screen. Uh, SN, your, uh, Is there any question? Your audio cut out for the last minute. Hello, Mr. Gumi.
Sir, Mr. Rumi, are you still there? You don't have Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're going, we're going now to uh, application 15, which is uh, 187 Sherwood Avenue. And this is application number seven, number 15. And here we have uh, Bill Apoll, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here, can you hear me? Oh yeah, could you please state your name and address for us? Sure. My name is Bill Lupo from uh, 9 Fred McLaren Boulevard, Markham, Ontario, L6E283. I'm uh, talking on behalf of the owner for 187B Sherwood Avenue. Okay, thank you. Now, the owner, uh, Vanessa Ford, uh, are, are you talking for, for them, right? We don't have to listen to her. Yes, I am okay. talking on behalf of on the owner. On their behalf. Okay, okay. So this is uh, application for alterations. You have only one variance and two letters of support. <laughs> Yeah, so um, so could you just, the variance said 97 DFSI from 60 required to 97. Could you please tell us what's the current in the in the building beside, before the, the alteration? What's right, the so the uh, existing? right now, the, sorry, go ahead. The existing. Yeah, the existing is 96%. Oh, okay, all right, okay. So members, we have... Uh, we have a minor variance here. There is no, no other speaker. Uh, two letters of support and one variance only uh, for alteration. Do we have, uh, do we need any, any, we don't need any, any pre pre presentation, huh? No. Okay. So, sir, we don't need any presentation. Do you want to add something or we just go to committee? Uh, just, I want to just add one, uh, one item. Uh, just very quickly, um, just wanted to let the committee know that the owner had bought the condo as a retirement home, and uh, this is only affecting the interior of the uh, space and all uh, the existing, all six other unit owners in the complex uh, of seven uh, are all, uh, have all seen the plans, are um, totally okay with it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, any question or I have a motion, Ms. Ms. Satarodi. Yes, to you, Mr. Chair. It's it's a very straightforward, and since the uh, original FSI was 0 0.96 times, therefore it's, it is, uh, this is minor, and it was almost the existing situation. I would like to put forward a motion to approve this application with no condition. Thank you. Second, Mr. K Mr. Klassen, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Sir, your application is approved unanimously with no conditions. Great, thank you. So that's number 15. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, Essen has now uh, reconnected his audio. Is he on? Okay. Okay, Mr. Mr. Comey, are you there? Hi, sir, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we hear you. Can you please, uh, can you please uh, pick up where we left, where we left it? So I'm not sure we where we kind of like left it. So I was uh, I was trying to explain like the design approach and early consultation of this house with with the neighborhood, and um, as I mentioned, we had uh, completion of the TRC early concept development and implementation of the city staff recommendation. As you can see in the file, we have provided letter of support from all immediate neighbors 
and total of 10 letters of support, all from addresses in the same street. So the design has been fully explained to the neighborhood and also has a strong support from neighbors. We also have gone through early concept development application with the TRCA, which resulted in, in multiple modification to the design. Last but not least, we have accepted and incorporated city staff recommendation about two variances, number three and number 10. Therefore, this design uh, considers stakeholder recommendation and consideration. I would like to pinpoint to two of the city staff uh, concern about the front setback and also the length. In regards to front setback, there are three main technical challenges. Irregular lot, front, front of the lot that being on the curve, and the TRCA setback. The additional setback requirement imposed by the TRCA resulted that the building to be pushed toward the front yard. In addition, the nature of the lot that being irregular and also being on the curve introduced technical challenges to maintain the required front setback. The house had to be designed in a zigzag shape, as, as you can see it in the presentation, uh, throughout the front of the lot. So we have multiple different front setbacks from 6.5 all the way to 7.6 meter. So the, the place that we, we are requesting 6.5 is only related to the very small portion of the house on the south side of the building, as, as, you, as you can see it on the presentation. So basically in that location, our front setback is in line with our adjacent neighbor, 11 of Montresor, which received an approval for, uh, for 6.47 meter front setback on June 23rd, 2022. So if this house was built, so we didn't have, like we didn't need any uh, additional front setback requirement. So because uh, now we are requesting based on the current situation, so we need this front setback. So in conclusion, we believe the request for the minor is nature and also consistent with the neighborhood. So we are in line with our adjacent property and um, uh, also uh, on the other side of the, the lot is, uh, is 7.58. In terms of the length, um, I would like to mention that, again, the nature of the lot being on the curve and, and, and also the way that we designed the house in a zigzag shape, along with the way that length is calculated, the resultant length to be disproportionately look long. Please note that the request for the 21.54 is only applicable to the below grade portion of the building on the north side. If you look at, at the same location, the habitable place of the, the house above ground has only 18.63 meter length. So as you can see on the top box blue section that we are, we are showing. So due to the zigzag shape of the, the house, the length of the house is varying along the building. Please note that the, the average length of the house is, is less than a 20 meter, is around 19.74. So as, as, as shown on, on, on the table on the top, that 21.54 is only representing 9% of the house, which is, which is below the grade. So, and, and also we, we want to mention that we are also in line with the permitted 35.4% uh, 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 GFA, which is the permitted bylaw coverage for the house. So that the, the the increase in the length did not result in the increase in the coverage. So, and also in terms of amassing, we are consistent with the, with the neighborhood's massing. So because of all of those explanations, we would like the committee to consider our application and approve our variances. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll see what the uh, members have to say. Uh, but before that, we have one more speaker here. Um, then we'll uh, we'll come back to you, okay? Um, we have uh, Alan Lung, Alan Tak Lung. Are you there? Hello. Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Could you please state, Hi. state your name and address for I'm, me? I'm uh, I'm 17 Montresa Drive. My name is Alan Pak Lung. Thank you. Tell us what I'm, you want. Uh, okay. uh, basically, the the balcony. The second floor balcony, uh, that would be like um, my concern is on the privacy side. And right now, uh, 
will be at the top of the tree, and if, if the trees are are there, then I'll be I'll be all right with it. But I'm not sure the tree would live. So basically, it's a privacy issue. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any question? All right, so we'll get back, Mr. Uh, Homi. Could you come back, please, and uh, summarize the uh, concern, and we'll move on to the committee. Yes, sir, I can address that comment. If you look at, again, to the, to the site plan in that presentation, uh, the JSON property that we are discussing is on the north side of the, if we come back to the, yeah, if we can go back to site plan, uh, that property is located on the, on the north side, and both property has a 10 feet wide easement, which makes the both property way far from each other, and also that the angle of the property that the way it's located on the curve make it even further away from each other. So that balcony which we are take, talking about right now is on the on the second floor, and it's also there are several trees because as you know this is a ravine lot with a lot of trees. Um, so we have a lot of trees, and that that basically provides a lot of uh, privacy. Not to mention that the front of this. Uh, this balcony is is facing way away from uh, from that property on on uh, on the north side of that. So so we believe that uh, um, because of the nature of the ravine lot and being a lot of trees there, so there is not much that much a privacy issue with this balcony. Okay, thank you. So the only change you made is number three and number ten. You changed them, right? Yes, yes, okay. sir, that's correct. Okay. Members, any question? Or uh, no question, so can I have a motion then? Mr. Klassen. Mr. Chair, uh, through you, I'd like to to move to approve the application, and I appreciate the changes that the applicant has made, but refusing, as staff have recommended, variance four and variance six. And uh, so the application would also be subject to urban forestry. Uh, and that's my motion. And uh, I believe there is a, a condition for transportation as well. Oh, yes, yes, okay. you're right. And the, yes, and transportation. Thank you. So, so your motion is to modify as, uh, as indicated by the applicant. Plus to refuse number four and six. Do I have a second? Can I have a second? Miss Manning is seconding. All in favor? Opposed? Mr. Bartolo is opposing. Okay, sir, your application is approved. Subject to the changes you made for number three and number 10. And refusing number four and number six condition to transportation and condition to forestry. That's, that's, that's the motion, that's the uh, decision. And that is number 15. Now we go to number 16. Application number 16, which is 39 Macro Drive, application number 16. And here we have Ben Baghdadi. Ben Baghdadi, are you there? Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Yes, this is Ben Baghdadi from BBA Design Studio, Inc. I'm the architect and the applicant for Thank this you. application before you... Thank you. So we have here an uh, application for um, uh, one and two-story additions. We have five variances. Transportation has no, no objection, and we have eight letters of support. But we have one more speaker here as uh, uh, 
and uh, like a neighbor. Uh, because of that, we need you to make a five-minute presentation. Sure, thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, may I have my uh, presentation on the screen? I'm sorry. Um, uh, the first, uh, the first floor plan. The purpose of this application is simply adding a powder room on the first floor, and um, extending the kitchen out. Uh, may I have my first floor on the screen? My apologies. Thank you. The house uh, presently doesn't have any powder room, and the kitchen on the ground floor is simply one row of cabinet beside the hallway, which doesn't function properly. Uh, on the second, on the first floor, please. Uh, this is the basement. Yes, thank you. Can you? Yes, can we have it zoom a bit to the uh, kitchen and powder room area? We are simply pushing out our east wall to gain more space inside to have a proper kitchen and add a powder room. And uh, to utilize this, we are extending it to the east, which is a dead space right now. No car can park in that area. And most cars in this neighborhood and my client already parked their car in front of the existing building. And this addition is only one story. Um, and uh, we are also adding a second floor addition to the rear of the existing house within the same footprint of the house to add a couple of more bedrooms. Basically, this house will have three bedrooms and one office space since my clients both, they work from home. As a result of this um, extension to the east and building in the back, we have five variances, which two of them regarding the parking, which transportation has no objection or repeat. We have a floor space index coverage and side yard setback, which in my report, uh, I explained all of them based on the present uh, houses in this neighborhood and the previous application approved by the committee that we are way much less than what was approved and what's happening in this neighborhood. I spoke with our neighbor at number 41, which I believe they're going to speak. Uh, this Monday, also my client spoke with them last week. Uh, first, they said we have no objection. Then they changed their mind. I spoke with our neighbor, and their concern mainly is the construction part, which I explained to them, although the, it's not a jurisdiction of the Committee of Adjustment to go through the construction. But um, I gladly would like to hear them and address any concerns if they might have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We are. We'll listen to them and we'll get you back. Okay, so we have here a uh, uh, Jill and Arno Van de Vurde. Are you there? Jill and Arno Van, are you there? Arnold, you're unmuted. Can you hear us now? Yes. Could you please state your name and address for the records here? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Jill and Arno Vandervoort at 41 McCurry Drive, East York, Ontario. We're both uh, owners of the house. Thank you. Tell us what's your concern. Um, so as stated, we uh, are generally uh, approving of our uh, neighbors wanting to expand, uh, given that we've done the exact same thing to our house 10 years ago, except for variance number four. Variance number four is uh, requesting uh, a setback adjustment to 0.71 centimeters to the lot line versus the 1.2 by the bylaw. That is a 40% variance uh, closer to our house. We don't uh, estimate that to be a minor variance. We actually consider that to be major. Four uh, reasons. One is foundation uh, could potentially be compromised during construction as a result. What will happen to flooding and runoff water in between our homes having only uh, 0.7 uh, meter in between the two homes after this construction? Uh, the setback will obviously uh, adjustment will result in unfavorable unfavorable uh, home resale value for us in our view as well as potentially being a, a, an increased fire hazard having the homes so close together so ultimately uh, when we did our renovation we went through the exact same process committee of adjustment for us was a non-issue given our plan was fully respecting uh, of the bylaw so all we're asking is for our architect and neighbors to just adjust their plans to stay within the boundaries. Uh, everybody would love to have a better kitchen and a powder room and all the amenities, but uh, unfortunately, we don't always get what we uh, what we want. Okay. Thank th you. Thank you. Um, any question? 
Okay, so we'll get back the agent. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, may I have my report on the screen on page five, please? Our reduced side yard setback is something that we see uh, in many of these houses in this neighborhood. If I can uh, have this report on page five. Our reduced side yard setback, as our neighbor expressed, is almost 40% reduction. But based on what we saw and what approved by the committee, at the bottom of the page five, um, you see a chart, uh, uh, sorry, a table. Uh, yes, down, down. Yes, that table. So most of this side yard setback are much more than what we are asking. There are 50, 60% reduction. Uh, that was approved by this uh, committee. And can, if we can go to the first page of my report, please, and zoom into the neighborhood. Yeah, if you can zoom into the map and... Uh, yeah, maybe a bit more. So um, what you're proposing, which is a site addition, is something that is... Um, going along in this neighborhood for a quite, a, uh, quite a time. Right in front of us, most of those properties at, like, say, 42, 44, 46 macro, they're they are almost touching each other. Uh, number 34 and, I'm sorry, 32 and 30 also, they're touching each other, more or less. Most of these properties right on the south side of us, which if you can push the uh, screen a bit uh, up, yeah, those properties are also touching each other. Most of the properties at the intersection of Macrae and uh, Bespro on east of us also almost touching each other. So what we're asking is not something out of character. And since it's not out of character, I'm not seeing the reason why we are devaluating anyone's property. Usually when a home goes through renovation, their uh, property value increases. When And when a property value increases, it va increases everybody's uh, value of their properties in the neighborhood when it's in line with what's been approved or what's been built in this property. Regarding the fire and the uh, foundation, although these are all permit um, phase, should the committee decide to approve this application, but we will make sure no fire, we will have the fire separation on the wall. And if you can go to the last page of my presentation, please. We left enough space between the inside our property for us to pass. And also everybody can maintain their walls. Even our neighbor, if they decide to maintain their walls, uh, they can pass through my client's property, which they already gave me their um, go ahead. Uh, yes. And as you can see, the green line is the ang no, the, um, the last page. Yes, if you can zoom in, the green line which uh, shows the angle of repose, it's beneath the footing of adjacent neighbor. That means we have no um, issues with the footing and the load onto their property. And the blue line, which is the chimney, which is their closest uh, wall to the property line is within, it's getting close to this angle. Their main house is much further away and we are almost four feet from the both houses. So I'm not seeing any uh, construction or foundation issue will happen to their um, existing footing on foundation. And regarding the water that I explained to our neighbor on Monday, we are thinking of discharging the water half to the backyard and half to the driveway and make sure no water goes to anybody's land. Okay. And uh, I'm glad if, uh, if, if, if any of the, um, the committee members have any question, I'd be glad to, ready to answer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions? Any question? If not, uh, can I have a motion? Mr. Klassen? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I appreciate the comments of the applicant and the neighbor. And uh, it does strike me that the proposal is minor, is in keeping with the four tests. So I'd like to move to approve the proposal. There are no objections from 
transportation or from forestry. Okay. Thank, well, thank you. Thank you. Second. Mr. Bartolo seconding, all in favor? Okay, thank you. Unanimously approved and there is no conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, committee. Have a nice okay. rest of the afternoon. You too. Okay, 17. Application number 17, which is 370 Glen Grove Avenue. And here we have uh, Noshin Muzaffari. Moshin Zafari. Hi. My yeah. Hi. Hi, my name is Nushin Mazafari. I'm here on behalf of my client, owner of 370 Killing Grove. Thank you. We have here as a new dwelling, six variances. Transportation has no objection except condition and condition of uh, forestry. Now, uh, let's see if uh, members, do we need a presentation here? Do you need a presentation? No? Okay, maybe you have a question or uh, move to a motion. If there is no question, maybe a motion, please. Unless you have a question. Mr. Bartolo? Yes, Mr. Chair, just a quick question uh, <laughs> relating to uh, an explanation of uh, why variance number three, the building length is required like that. Uh, yes, if you, if you uh, go to the presentation material that I have uh, provided, as you see on the site plan, the actual building mass has 18.5-meter uh, of length, and six foot of this uh, proposed length is a one-story addition to the, uh, sorry, it's an uh, extension uh, to the rear edge of the building, uh, and it's a one-story addition for the breakfast area. And this building length is uh, aligned with the adjacent neighbor on the west side. Uh, and uh, the properties of uh, on this uh, street, Glengorov, and all the neighborhoods, like Glencairn, Mona, uh, these streets ha uh, contain uh, very deep uh, lots and having a Mm. length and depth variance is very common in this neighborhood. I also have provided some examples in the same street, uh, like other similar uh, approved cases in the street uh, that have uh, same uh, or even more uh, proposed length or uh, depth variance. I see. So when I look at this, the existing condition looks like it's 18.5 meters, and you're that additional 1.83 is just for a portion at the. Yes, uh, exactly. Not to read the there. Main, okay. The, the, uh, the main uh, building mass is 18.5, and that uh, six foot is just a one story uh, extension at, uh, to the rear of the building. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, uh, we started from the middle. I should have given you your five minutes presentation. And uh, do you want to add something before we go to committee? See if you have any other questions, any other explanations? Uh, no, but I think the proposal is very clear. And I also have uh, provided some uh, supporting material, uh, which makes it even more uh, clear. I don't think... Uh, I need to explain anything unless uh, committee members have any question. Thank you. I, Thank That's you. Right. Okay. So, members, any questions? And if there is no more questions, uh, maybe a motion. Uh, Mr. Bartolo. 
I'm I'm ready for a motion there, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, so through you, um, I'll put forward a motion to approve this application subject to the conditions of the uh, urban forestry memo attached. Thank you. Second. Second, Mr. Bar Mr. Klassen, seconding. All in favor? Okay, unanimous. Okay, so your application is approved unanimously to subject to uh, forestry. Thank you. Okay, so we're into uh, the last uh, last one of the last, morning. Last one. And we're going to have a, uh, what is it? Members, how, mu how much do we need? Half an hour for lunch? Half an hour? Half an hour is fine for me. Sorry? Yes, that'd be good. Y yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Half an hour, thank you. Okay, so we'll be, uh, could you put back the uh, session? We'll come back in half an hour, 2.15. Mr. Secretary, next, next time give us one hour for lunch, not half an hour. I want to go 2.30. <laughs>